I believe that's our call, Mauler. What do you think? I am in agreement with this. It's the, it's the signal for drinks, for happiness, drinks. for hey. criticism, for what else happens in bars? Fights! <laughs> All yeah, right. we can do that later. <laughs> All right. The bar is open. Drink them if you've got them, because you're going to need them tonight. We've got a, we've got an interesting lineup of topics, I suppose. Mm. It's remember, all great stuff. is an acceptable choice. Fair enough, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, you're an eldritch god, so maybe you can synthesize water into alcohol. Who knows? Yeah. You know, blood. You know, why not? Uh, but we can't do this alone. We need we need people here to help us. And so we got a couple of guests brought in specifically for the occasion. Should we bring them in? Yes. All righty. Well, first of all, we've got Gary Nerdrotic. Hello, sir. It's great to have you back again, man. Uh, thanks for having me back on with my drink of choice, Texas water. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right, let's do this. I'll get you started. You're making me feel really guilty. I'm like the only one drinking here. <laughs> Mahler's drinking. Always assume I'm drinking. I'm always yeah, assuming you're drinking. I assume everybody's on drugs of some kind. Yeah. <laughs> Don't so worry. We're just like, high on we're high on life. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Who needs drugs when you've got She Hulk? Oh, uh, you don't. <laughs> you don't. And we, we've got our last guest here who is Baggage Claim. That's, uh, this is your first time at Open Bar and welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, first time. Last time we did just one on one. Yes, it was. Um, and it was like a happy hour kind of um, talking about it was really broad, actually. It was like all the kind of um, female characters that have been done throughout the years in, in movies and kind of how they're going wrong these days. And it was a really good yeah. discussion. It was great. So thank you for really coming good. back for this. Thank you for having me back. Um, and on that topic, I suppose you should ask, like, uh, how, how pleased are you with She-Hulk? <laughs> it's, it's gone. <laughs> I'm here with my giant mug to drink away on I'm when when talking about chi hulk you gotta be you gotta be pretty tipsy or drugged out I think I, I think Feel, that makes it easier it makes yeah. it easier to cope with I suppose um, feels like a fever dream for sure especially when it comes to modern feminism I was gonna say I mean you know we're 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 gentlemen here, but you know you're a lady and in some sense you're the target audience for this so like how did it make you feel watching this show yeah I was thinking about that i i I know a lot of it is kind of structured to be very pro women, pro women making their own choices and, oh, I shouldn't be called She Hulk. You know, it's a derivative of a man, all these things that are just intended to empower women. And it just, it feels very boring to watch. I don't feel inspired. I don't feel feminine watching it. I don't think that the idea of She Hulk in these giant muscles and then in a sundress attending a wedding then showing off her butt feels like a very feminine thing to me uh i think it's like the new wave of feminism where to be female you have to be male hmm. but constantly put men, men down while you do it mm -hmm. it's a, it's a strange situation because when i think about the guys in this show um they are the biggest collection of morons and wimps yes. uh, and just you know like the kind of people I've never met in my entire life I've never met a man who remotely resembles any of the guys portrayed in this show and it's weird that that's the writer's perception of what men are and and how they yeah. act because yeah it just doesn't line up with reality but what's weird is if you call that out and say well this this seems a bit off the the response I think would be well if you're offended by it then clearly you're uh, you know it's hitting too close to home and you're one of the people that's the problem. <laughs> I think they need to be yes. really careful with that logic considering what they get offended by and stuff. It's like I wouldn't I wouldn't run with that if I were you. I, uh, you know, <laughs> but they will. Like, of these insane characters of people who are, like they're unrecognizable as human, not as like oh oh dear this looks like me and I can't handle it. Oh. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> the criticism. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And it's interesting because in the, I think it was in the first episode where they talked about how I think when she finds out she has a super power, Nikki says to her, oh, are you going to be an Avenger now? And she says, no, it's for narcissists. And then the <laughs> rest of the themes of every single show have rotated around her dating life and and her fine, you know, her career, that's fine. And what clothes she wears. And, you know, it's such a self-obsessed viewpoint yeah. of a superhero how is that not narcissistic and it's how is it narcissistic to want to put on a suit and help other people with it why is it narcissistic to do that i, I think there's two strands to it right because on the one hand you can you can go down the road of saying that um, a superhero doesn't always have to be motivated immediately by altruistic um motives yeah. you know like tony stark is a great example you know he's, yeah. he is a narcissist he is arrogant and he is um there's an element of him wanting the glory of being yes. iron man like he wants people to know that he's iron man because of his own ego um but it's also tempered by a genuine desire to help people because he, he recognizes the the damage that he's caused and he wants to try and find a way to to undo it like he's a problem solver and this is another problem that he wants to solve um, so you can have flawed characters like that, um, but to to call it out as being, you know, a, a shit motivation for a person to do something like this and then display it yourself, which is what this show tries to do. Um, yeah, it's like a classic, you know, want to have your cake and eat it kind of situation. You, you can't call out the same thing that you're doing and expect people to sympathize with you. Yeah. And to your point about the men being very strange, I think it's so creepy uh, the man that she sleeps with after while she's also helping Wong out with those weird creatures mm -hmm. that she just carries him into her <laughs> bedroom oh my god that was just horrifying uh or even the way she jumps on top of him I was just I was completely blown away that how is that is this is this the kind of manhood that that women, these women want? I mean, I guess the answer is yes, but I just, I couldn't believe it. It seems to be a little bit of like, we're going to turn the tables on men. Mm -hmm. That seems to be some of their motivation here because you've got a scene like that, like you say, where she picks him up and carries him because she's so much bigger and stronger than him. You know, she's very much the dominant person, yeah. the dominant player in that sort of sexual encounter. Um, but then... You've got things like in the latest episode where she gets it on with Daredevil and he has to do the walk of shame going home. And they even straight up call it the walk of shame. Yeah. That I'm sorry, the it. walk of shame doesn't apply to men. <laughs> like there's no man. Yeah, there is uh, no unless... shame in our game ever. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> no man I, would carry his shoes like that either. They're not high heels. They're freaking shoes. We put yeah, them on. Th this is straight up like we're going to take walking what, out what? like this. <laughs> yeah, He's getting high fived the whole yeah. time home. Did it, bro? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think the, the, the part of the problem, drinker, is that, uh, and you've mentioned it before, it's the writer's perspective. So these are men; these are Hollywood men specifically. That they're th this is the world of Hollywood. It's the bubble of Hollywood. Their experience does not go outside of this bubble. Even if they're not from Hollywood, when you're there. For about 10 years five years struggling that's all you know that's your entire life experience it's drinking texting and gossiping and that's all this show is you know i said it's a show it's made for wine moms but it's by like women who i mean like spinsters who will never have children that not with this attitude towards men like and i don't know like men have been horrible in hollywood so have women i mean uh olivia wilde just proved that uh, women can be just as horrible as men as a director of a movie with all the drama there. So that's that's what we're dealing with, no life experience. And more importantly, uh, what everybody's missing on Twitter right now, well, I'm, I'm sorry, all the bops. So beep, boop, bop, or I'll say it in freaking <laughs> code. And then all, all the, well, quite frankly, autism that's there that's missing the point of why we're upset at this show. It's you can do stuff tongue in cheek once in a while, but if you go back and read the She Hulk comic, if you actually read the She Hulk comic, there's still a seriousness to it. Even though it's breaking the fourth wall, it's not jokey jokey all the time. That was part of the problem Byrne had with it in the beginning. And he had fights, he always had fights with his editors, but it was taken like even Slot, who's a moron, as a sloth as a person, uh, like he got it right in his comic run for a little while. 
so it, it there's a seriousness to it. Like we take this serious and we've, I have it in my video and I'm sure you guys have run with it too. The creator of this show came out and said, I didn't like superhero comics. They were just too serious. The drama was just too much for me. So she read indie books, which could have been I don't, love and rockets or nothing. I mean, she could have been just lying. I'm not really sure, but they automatically didn't respect the source material. And so they took a really popular character amongst comic fans, real comic fans, and turned her into a oh, Disney Marvel character, unfortunately. I, I think um, I could almost live with all of this, right, if the humor really landed. Like, you could almost just go down the, the airplane road or the, the hot shots road where it's just absolute nonsense like complete satire and it like there's almost like no continuity with previous series or whatever it's just there to have fun if the jokes are absolute bangers that really get you laughing but none of that happens like that's mm -hmm. that's yeah. the fundamental problem it's a comedy that's not funny like <laughs> that's because this is like the the rebuttal that you get from a lot of the, the people who support it it's like well it's it doesn't have to make sense and it doesn't have to line up with other marvel shows it's a comedy. Just have fun with it. Um, and I say, okay, fine. But if it makes me laugh, great. But it never, ever has. Like, And I don't think it does with anyone. I don't know yeah. who would find this funny. Like, The jokes <clears throat> don't land. There are, there are no workable jokes in this. It's just really bland. Really, like, um, it, it comes across almost as bitter a lot of the time. Like, observational mm -hmm. humor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, it, it, yeah, it's... It's it sees like, us between being very bitter to being toxically positive where the way that they try to build each other up the feet you know the female characters are constantly calling each other you're so fabulous and you're so amazing mm. and it's just it just feels very fake I, and that's that's how a lot of creatives uh, talk to each other in hollywood that is very normal vena vernacular there yeah all, you're always like, like right when they're in front of you, you're just the most amazing person and then they completely forget about you as soon as right. you're out of line of sight. When I was writing that why phase four for Marvel's really sucked, uh, for Marvel really sucked, I watched the entire red carpet for the Eternals. Ooh. Just because I think that was the most political. It's saving lives. It's literally saving lives. <laughs> yeah. But it was, I, I felt sick at how much people were just overly complimenting each other, but that's the Hollywood life that you're constantly sucking up to each other because that's that's the bubble you live in. Mm -hmm. and wow, that was gold, by the way. That that red carpet. Yeah. Watch it sometime if you need clips. Yeah. They're there. Yeah. yeah. You, you just they think all like, think that they're they all think that they are saving the world. It's they insane. Do. Yeah. I know. It's like the the narcissism on display is is both like like humorous and terrifying at the same time like that these people would have such a high opinion of themselves you know it, it's like you're making corporatized trash <laughs> like you ain't you ain't saving anything my friend <laughs> <laughs> no. just your own egos that's all yeah and you know with this it's um well i mean i guess i should talk a little bit about the, the latest episode because it's the one that finally brings in daredevil because mm -hmm. It's so funny because like the, the show has been teasing this and it's almost like the people who defend it are like, oh, you're mad that Daredevil hasn't been brought in. And I, I, I'm the opposite. I'm like, I've been happy up until now that he's not been here because the less, the fewer characters from Marvel that you bring in that are actually likable, the fewer you can ruin. And so mm -hmm. I guess I knew it was going to happen sooner or later and here he came and I'll get... I'll give the show the tiniest, tiniest little bit of credit, right? This episode was the least terrible out of the lot. It's the only one that had a male character in it that was somewhat likable. And I think a lot of it's down to Charlie Cox and his great performance. If there's some kind of award that you can give for being a good sport, then this guy deserves it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Instead of female lawyer of the year. Um, and I, I think maybe there was... In this one episode, there was a little bit of oversight from Marvel. I don't know if they were like, look, this character actually matters, and so we're not going to let you fuck him up by, with your amateur writing. We're going to put a little bit of effort in to make sure he's not ruined. Um, so I will give them a little bit of credit for that. Like, he wasn't completely uh, humiliated like I expected him to be. 
I think I'm it was sure crazy, and um, I'll give him a little bit of credit for the fact that the plot finally allowed her horrible actions to have consequences. Right at the end, I was like, oh my god, finally. Yeah. 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 That was surprising. I, I wasn't sure that they were going to do that at all. Because when she started tearing apart the TVs, I was like, okay, yeah, it sucks that like a sex tape is being released about you, but uh, that shit's dangerous. <laughs> and then she... um. Oh yeah, see, I was mixing up the scenes in my head. I was about to say, didn't she like pick up a car and throw it to someone? I was like, oh no, that's when she no, was no, doing no. a superheroing, and that that was considered to be okay. I guess that yep. was just a little. Even joke. Daredevil makes a joke about how like <laughs> property damage, and it's like, my, dude. My favorite line was in the bar when he, when Matt Murdock said, "Well, the way I see it." <laughs> <laughs> That that one totally went over in my head at the time. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That no, was they, they, the it was, you know, it was funny though, right? Because the, the scene in the bar when they're doing a bit of flirting and you can tell the actors are, are both quite good at what they're doing. And like, there's actually an, an okay bit of chemistry between them. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think yeah. Tatiana Maslany is a terrible actress. She's been lumbered with awful material. But like when she's given a guy like him to play off of two good actors... Uh, it, it felt okay. It felt like kind of natural. It's almost like the first time in the whole series that the show has actually found its groove just for a couple of minutes, you know? Um, but, you know, they still had to have... They go home and he has to do the walk of shame and all that stuff, like, later on. But, yeah. Little bits like that just show that, like, it could have been it could have been something okay in the hands of better writers. Yeah. God, I hate it. <laughs> it's like uh... I hate it now. It's like it, it's um somebody responded to me on Twitter. I don't know if they were it doesn't matter, really. They they just they quote tweeted my uh, how it started, how it ended and they just put sad. You could say they're saying I'm sad or that sad, I don't know. But I just went, yeah, it's sad. It's sad that Daredevil was in the best thing Marvel has ever done and now he's in the worst thing Marvel has ever done. Yeah. Way to go. Nice to tie that little knot there and I, I... ruin him. Yeah. yeah. I think his, um, yeah, like it was never going to work trying to bring him into a, a light-hearted comedy show like this. Like it's the exact polar opposite of his series. You know, he mm. he is a dark, brooding hero, and that's the kind of setting he needs to be in. Uh, like I say, it didn't humiliate him, but at the same time, he was just a weird fit for a show like this. Yeah. And I don't know if the yeah. the like the thinking basically went as far as, well, he's a lawyer, so she's a lawyer, so mm -hmm. he should be in the show. And they should hook up. Uh, yeah, exactly. But it, it kind of it really shows, and I don't know if this was intentional, just how absolutely shit of a lawyer she is. Like she doesn't do any prep work for her trial. He he confounds her with like really basic facts that she should absolutely have known from her client uh and it just made me think wow like you're female lawyer of the year in this universe like it seems like that must be a really low benchmark because it is drinker all the women got it <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but it's like you're you're terrible at your job like he absolutely wiped the floor with you with very little effort and uh, she won lawyer of the year uh she got an award for lawyer of the year but for yeah, not doing any lawyering. The client yeah. tampered with the uh, the technology before using it and tried to blame the manufacturer. It's just like, this is just basic. You have to get that sorted ahead of time. But he smells it in the court case, and then they're like, oh, shit. And then the judge is just like, there you go, done. And it's like, that's not how cases work, man. No, like, yeah, like, yeah, she the lawyer would, might be if, thorough. You know, yeah, she she would have gone. Questions. Yeah, she would have gone to the manufacturer and said, "Okay, like, tell me about this, and is there a way that this could have gone wrong? Can you explain how this could have malfunctioned?" She would have gone to the guy who used it and said, "What did you do with it? Explain exactly how you used it." And it would have taken her about five minutes to put together the fact that he he fucked up and he put the wrong fuel in it and it didn't work and that's why he got injured. But it's exactly. like, no, didn't exactly. think to do that because the writers don't understand courtroom stuff and they don't they don't <laughs> care. When I went to my defense attorney, I said, I'm not guilty. And he just said, okay. And that's how he went to court. He didn't check me out or anything. He didn't vet anything. He just believed me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah believe all men. It, it, the case that he presented was like, well, he seems nice. You know, I don't think he's guilty. <laughs> so I'm off with it. On his face today. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. this is. Oh, man. Yeah, they really don't do a good job. I mean, they they portray her as, as her career being so important, right? Important enough that she shouldn't be a superhero. She shouldn't be an Avenger or anything. Her her career is so important, but they're not actually building her up as very competent. That's that's it. I could get if like almost she was a shitty person, but an amazing lawyer. Yeah. Like you know, because I guess that's that's the price people pay sometimes. You know, to be amazing at something in their field, mm -hmm. they have to sacrifice yeah. their personal life. So okay, cool. Um, but yeah. you're demonstrating the exact opposite with this character. She's really comically shit at her job, and yet she keeps getting accolades and opportunities like heaped on her. It doesn't make a lick of sense. Um, and I don't know if it's and just wish fulfillment on the part of the writers or what. Because of the nature of the show, too, I'm expecting that this the big old thing that happens at the end of this episode is going to be washed away in like five minutes. Yeah. Well, yeah, of You're course. Right. No, no consequences to anything. Um, it's going to go back to everything being normal straight away. Because, yeah, a lot of people will say that this is a sitcom to defend it. It's interesting. As if mm -hmm. sitcoms are always shit. We got a Mephisto thing, too, Mahler. Because oh, no. remember the Red Hulk? Everybody's like, it's going to be the Red Hulk at the end. Well, they she jokes about it in this episode. She's yeah. like, oh, is this the penultimate episode that's going to lead up to a Red Hulk showing that it's not going to be a Red Hulk and it's just going to be a big nothing like all of these series have been. I, oh, you didn't watch it. Did you Did you guys see the finale of Hawkeye? Anybody? Here's the finale of Hawkeye. You did a bag. I'm sorry, by the way. I'm sorry. So you saw what happened to Kingpin. You saw yeah. what they did to Kingpin. In yeah. five minutes, they took the greatest villain who decapitated <laughs> a guy with a car door and <laughs> some athletic girl uh, yeah. with explodey arrows you know yeah. uh, he didn't even I, hear the car coming that no. his mom that her mom was driving oh. <laughs> yeah, he gets run over by a soccer mom yeah <laughs> you know hawkeye was still okay the one i really struggled to watch was loki i actually kept falling asleep over and over i honestly it was like i was hit by a tranquilizer dart i could not keep my eyes open you mean Wait, all that positive affirmation didn't keep you awake you're amazing no. Yeah, you run rings around them. You're amazing. amazing. You're amazing. <laughs> I, I think it's it. It almost comes down to like how far the character can fall. And with someone like Loki, like damn, he had been a great character when yeah. he was in his prime. You know, in the first Avengers movie, like he was terrifying in what he could do. He actually had a plan. He was smart. Yeah. he was devious. Um, you know, he went through a real character arc in things like Thor Ragnarok, and then I sacrificed Loki himself so much. Yeah, died as a good man, and then this Loki was an idiot. The Just way he was even idiot. written, the, his introduction in Avengers, where the lighting, everything, he's so pale. He looks, he does look like an alien. He's just, and he's here with great purpose. And it's just, it was so beautifully introduced where you do feel like he's a dangerous being. Yeah. Yeah. Did, did you get the feeling in Avengers, like he had been brought back for like from death, from hell, like, you know, because the last time we saw him was in Thor falling to his death. And yeah, he had like, yeah, he looked like he Dark was. Circles. Resurrected. Yeah, it yeah. was really cool. It's the, it's really the most evil he's looked when you first yeah. see him in Avengers. Yeah. yeah. With that smile on his face, like that really oh, it's great. It really smoking. evokes Loki. It doesn't evoke. Dumbass. I think <laughs> just it, it's that combination of like great intellect and in, you know incredible power, strength, um, all of those things that make a, a brilliant antagonist. Yeah, I think Joss uh, Whedon really understood the psychology of all those characters. I think you know, I, of all the Marvel movies, I think Avengers Two is probably my favorite, even though a lot of people don't like that one. But I like how he used to really do a great deep dive into what was motivating each character, including the antagonist. I, I think with that, like it's, um, yeah, you got a really insight into Tony, uh, particularly like his desire to protect things and like the pursuit of that to, to everyone's detriment. Um, the, the real weak point of that movie was Ultron himself. He was just a really like under underutilized antagonist. And I get the yeah. impression that he could have been so much more sinister and, dangerous yes. and yeah, terrifying they, they, that decision to make him anti-tony was weird was really really weird the trailer portrayed him as so much darker because yeah. that trailer is yes. one of the best trailers the trailer was amazing that yes. was just a great example of like oh you you set up something that absolutely didn't come to pass in the movie yeah, yeah. Everyone was yeah. expecting you know something good a darker <laughs> version yeah you know <laughs> Oh man, having having a robot dress down the Avengers as well because they're at like their height almost to that point. Things have been going well. And yeah, 
and they're so like, confident. Yeah, you're like, you're not you're not you're doing this for yourselves, like and, and all this other stuff. You know, it's just like, ooh, this will be fun. And then he's like, remember when he chops off Claw's arm? And he's like, ooh, 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 yeah. I didn't mean to do it. Ooh, yeah. ooh, ooh, that that probably hurts. Ooh, and it's like, what the what? Yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't stand that. Well, um, I'm pretty. <laughs> I sure will Josh stand by that movie until the day I die. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's one of those uh, Hulkbuster armor out of it. That's that's the good thing. We got the Hulkbuster armor. Yeah, the movie got a uh, movie studio butchered, from what I've gathered. Anyway, like, there's, it's curious if it would be another cut of it or whatever. But um, oh, it, that's what uh, pissed off Whedon. Well, it made Whedon refuse Infinity War and Endgame. Imagine what you'd have to do to make him want to not take those opportunities. You know? Yeah, because they interviewed made him a lot, right? It? Uh, what they did with him and Ultron, he, he did not enjoy the production of Ultron. Right. And I'm pretty sure there's a quote there. Interference, sure, like... Yeah, I don't think he doesn't consider Age of Ultron like his movie. His movie. Because right, they were, okay. I mean, they were making him interject a lot of different threads that they wanted to open up, right? That was yeah. the main issue. Well, you had Vision, you had Wanda, like a lot of, in a lot of new Ragnarok, characters getting interest. Yeah. Setting up Ragnarok, yeah. Which is funny because his setup of Ragnarok is a much more serious thing. Mm -hmm. in that movie because that's what it was going to be and then they were like fuck it <laughs> Wait, yeah. by the way i don't bring I don't me the that. biggest fucking clown you can find oh. and yeah. away he's like that'll be me then <laughs> the even, best is when he Ragnarok, asked but, yeah. when he asked natalie portman if she wants to be in a star wars movie where is he where's he living <laughs> new zealand apparently yeah <laughs> he doesn't care that's the thing it sucks yeah yeah ragnarok the way ragnarok was set up in in uh ultron was was really cool that saying to Curious. you know when he looks at thor i forget the name of idris elba's character but when he looks at I thor know. and he calmed down but he says you're don't can't you see you're the bringer of destruction you're the bringer of death and it, it was it was such a great setup i wish they had led more from that even though i mean ragnarok is a good movie in the sense it was funny and all these other things but it's a weird really one like because it was like correct. a it was a short term victory, but a long term problem that it created. You know, it created a yeah. monster basically. Where it's oh, like yeah. it, it lifted the Thor movies out of the doldrums that they'd been in with the Dark World, which was just so fucking boring and forgettable. Like I, I can't even remember the antagonist name or anything in that. Yeah, Dark Elf, um, Malekith, that's it. <laughs> what yeah, a waste, I just remember though. Christopher Eccleston played him under lots of latex. That's, that's crazy yeah. that that was Christopher Eccleston. I know. Like, but they oh. picked such a great guy. People were so excited. It's like, oh, the first doctor, and like, yeah, it was such but a waste. So, you know, it, he hated it the did. Experience. Really, I don't, I don't yeah. doubt it. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, it did He's something with Thor that hadn't been done before, and it at least found a way to make the character enjoyable because his own movies had been boring up until that point. But then, yeah, yeah they created a monster where Taika just was given full creative control, and he was allowed to write the thing for. Love and Thunder, and that was just the worst move they could have made. Oh, I'm surprised Christian Bale hasn't come out and had a bit of a meltdown about it because I, I love Christian Bale. His acting is always really good, and it seemed like he was the only one really trying on that set. I don't know well, how he would have down, worked on a set like that. He's put out the comments recently, right, about the green screen. Is oh, did he? He said he said something like it's the most monotonous type of acting ever, and the. Uh, he just he didn't even know what was happening. I think the quote was something like they tell him to go to screen B or something. He was like, I they all look the same. They're all just green. Just like, oh man. <laughs> no, I and, feel like and, oh sorry. No, it's okay. Uh they, they what they'll do is they'll repurpose battle scenes. So they'll like keep a shot that he did that was to something else going on in the screen and put and replace it with something completely different. Uh, that's oh, that's oh. been happening a lot with Marvel, right? Oh. So uh, the the rumors of Kevin Feige being spread like way truth for one, he spread himself thin, and and they are absolutely true. They are a thousand percent true. It's chaos right now. Uh, that's why that's why you have announcements like Deadpool three that trump everything they've announced in the last two years. I can't think of anything. It's, it's the, like that's, people this, are more this, that than the Avengers films. Yeah, yeah this is like two Avengers films. No one cares. Two, yeah, and, it, and it's basically like bringing back um, a, a fifty odd year old Hugh Jackman from <laughs> a not right. particularly successful series of X Men movies, and it's like that's more exciting for people than like basically anything that Marvel have announced. Mm -hmm. 
I this feel like it's at. entirely because what they're feeling right now from this stuff is not cutting anymore. And then it's like, remember the older stuff? You like that? And then you're like, ooh, this, okay, yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, I like Logan. Everyone like Logan, so... How long do you think it's going to be before they bring back guys like Robert Downey Jr. and Ben's? not long? That is the yeah, sign of the, the the death knell, right? Like it's when they've come full circle and Robert Downey Jr. comes back. That's when you know they were desperate. Mm. It, it's going to be yeah, it, it'll be like Dark Fate when like you've got a sixty-five year old Linda Hamilton trying to like do action scenes. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. they'll be uh, Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. will be in Secret War. I you think so? Take it to the bank. They'll be yeah, there. I think that's fair. Yep. It's, and, but the thing is, it'll be in a way of like, well, you know, I'm not coming back. It's just a multiversal thing. It's it's mm -hmm. just a character. And that's what everyone's it's, excuses now. When they all make these like definitive things, I will never play this character. Well, it doesn't count if it's multiverse. Yeah. And that's kind of the reason why everyone hates multiverse. It doesn't count. None of yeah, it counts. Nothing counts. Yeah. It's, that's yeah. why we can show you Reed Richards and then kill him. It's like, I, okay. Yeah. That's I, why they I made I, comics. They suck in the comics, and they're going to suck in the movies. Uh, I've yeah, never this liked is, th This is what I said on, on Twitter like a few days ago. It's like, when you do this, there's just no consequences to anything anymore. Anything can happen. Anyone can get killed and resurrected at any point. Why would you care now? Because there's no, there's no repercussions. There's no long-term impact to anything. Uh, mm -hmm. You can just do whatever you want with the multiverse. Um, kind of hard to get invested in what's going on at that point. You know? Where you is know, it even meant to go? It's sad that the MCU is at a point where somebody said reboot in there, and you're probably right. That's what they're headed towards, and they never needed to reboot. They could just recast characters, and they've got a half a century minimum of comics they can adapt of each character. They can do that till the end of time uh, with, with events that, you. I mean, you think, like, oh, the Infinity Gauntlet's the biggest event. No, there's actually events they've done that are bigger, that they could pull off that would be cool as hell, but not now, not with these people. I'm talking about a different timeline in, in our multiverse. Yeah, like 10 uh, years you ago. Know, 10 years ago or 20 years from now that they could adapt. That would be great. Thor, they could, if they took them, if they if they played the character straight like they're supposed to, they could have done it forever and it would have been really entertaining and people would have loved it. But, you know, you, you know why people could would have loved it? Because people, a lot of people, love those comics for decades. They sold uh, in the hundreds of thousands to the millions for decades. So these idiots think they can come in and rewrite all these stories with what, fuck all, excuse me, of uh, writer's experience, and they think they can do it better. And they laugh at it. And that's the part that Jessica Gao, that's what irritates me about Jessica Gao. She just clowns nerds. This whole She-Hulk thing is clowning nerds. I've got people. I've got people on Twitter calling me a fucking incel, which is hilarious. Uh, but that's fine. That's what you, that's, that's the kind of fan you wanted. This is the kind of fan you wanted, Marvel. You have it. That is a Disney Marvel fan. You can pick them out in a lineup easily. Uh, yeah. and, and they're the ones seal clapping. That's the one. That, that's your fandom now. Have fun with it. Yeah, according to this fandom, all you boys are incels, and I'm a pick-me girl, and that's it. Yep. There's yeah. nothing else to it. You can't, you can't yeah. have any legitimate criticism of anything. Um, yeah. Speaking of which, actually, Jamila Jamil decided to weigh in. I, this, I'll do this just before <laughs> we move away from She-Hulk, because uh, yeah, I think we've all said a bit, an, our bit about it. But, uh, yeah, she decided that she was going to engage with the fans um, the other day on Twitter, and basically it didn't go very well. Um, so she did like her initial. In fact, I'll see if I can share it actually, because I've got the article here from Bounding Into Comics, because they do really good um, presentations on this stuff. So uh, there we go. Uh, all right, let me know when you can see it. Hopefully, you can. There you go. So she started off by saying, "Waiting for the final episode of She-Hulk, like eating McDonald's fries for some reason." Okay, so anyway, someone said, sir, all that build-up of 20 minute episodes for nothing to happen, you won't be seeing a season two. Mm. Um, yeah, so she didn't take too well to that. Um, and I, I just, I love her response here, um, where she basically says, I don't care, I got to do what I want, and that's all that matters, and I got paid. Um, and I just thought, what a, what a great attitude to have. But uh, Jeremy... Fortunately, was able to leap in and say uh -huh. She-Hulk actress doesn't care if she gets paid if the show is successful because she already got paid. Amazing. Um, and I, yeah, she she had a response to him, to be yeah. fair. 
saying that the show is successful. We were number one in America based on a, a made-up metric that uh, is the most obscure and particular thing ever. Uh, if we don't get a season two, I'm beyond happy with what we have. We made a lot of people happy, and we were happy and loved it. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll say with you guys, um, I was pretty happy with the show because, you know, I've had millions of views out of it. So. <laughs> Yeah, Probably I mean, you like, have to. She asked how our life was going. Uh, my response was so good. So good. Oh, the Spider Man meme, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's going great. Keep doing this shit. And we'll just keep on picking up your pieces and keep alienating more fans. Uh, the very few that you have. And that app that she showed, uh, Papa Gundam, put it in his video today. So, hail it's a Gundam. But it was whipped media and it was some kind of tv app so some obscure app that you have to watch she hulk on and if you watch she hulk on it then it was number one on that app an app i've right. never heard of by the way yeah and is it not like you know um most popular streaming only show that's released on the first tuesday of a month yes. under a full moon kind of thing like the most like, particular the, thing the nielsen ratings uh it didn't even debut in the top 10 right it had half a week and it didn't get enough minutes to debut in the top 10. And when it finally debuted in the top 10 in the next round, it was like number six uh, behind uh, Hot D and some other stuff. Uh, I think even behind Game of Thrones in one metric. Game of Thrones. Damn. Oh, Game and of I, I Thrones. Will, okay. Yeah. I will say, to, I'll, give, I'll give her a, a slight bit of credit, though. Um, because she says, because Germany had, had replied to her and says, if the show is a success, as you say, there will be a season two and none of these so-called haters are going to matter. Which begs the question, why do you continue to focus on negativity when you claim there is so much positivity around it? And she replies to say, because why only live in a bubble of congratulations? I engage plenty with people who love the show. Um, so I think she's almost trying to, to like reach out in that sense of like well i'm willing to listen to criticism um but like their her attitude then is like well i'm only willing to listen to it if you engage with me in the the particular way that i want you to and you have to be like super polite and respectful in order to do it um which is and, which is fine i mean but but she's not taking it that step further that okay if you don't want to be in this like congratulatory bubble you also have to see that there is something called legitimate criticism I, I think yeah. so, yeah. And it's like, look, Jamila, if you're watching this, you're more than welcome to come on and we can discuss with you in a in a polite, respectful way the issues with She Hulk. I think we can we could probably give you a big a good breakdown of like where the show could be better, I think. Yeah. Agreed. I think uh, a lot of people some people in Hollywood who may be internet savvy are sensing the pendulum swinging and people who would not be open to any kind of criticism before and were willing to come out and call us racist and sexist and everything we're still being called by i don't know amazon right now uh that there are some that are like maybe we should listen to them because if uh, them because it's it feels like the tide is turning i think is that the case i don't know i've seen that with other in other areas like bill maher for instance trying to get out a, a, a ahead of the shift that is definitely going on. It's like undoubtable, mm -hmm. that, like, undeniable. Sorry, that it's abs. It, it is happening. Uh, and you know, does it go too far? I don't know, but things are changing uh, culturally. And you know, a, a Marvel project is getting just rashed. Uh, like Rotten Tomatoes is still like thirty five percent. And it, there's review bombing on both sides. So that's a that's a just a BS argument. But it's like it's it's ratings everywhere it's, else it suck too. So it's uncanny to see so many accounts I'm familiar with be like ripping into the older shows when when they came out, they were so positive about them and just being mm -hmm. like, This is the best we've had. I remember some people being like, I don't know, I think it's better than Daredevil. And it's like, well, I think they're about the same. Daredevil and One Division, you know, One Division, it's just like, <laughs> no. Yes, you see what I mean? Like these days, people are like one division how many episodes were even in that wasn't it just like they exploded each other in fire lasers and there was some cool things there in the, and it's like yeah that's, that's loki lots nobody of nobody can tell you what happened in loki anymore one division no. was was i i like one division i know a lot of people didn't like it there are parts of it i really hated but there were parts i liked but then then you have the multiverse of madness and it just it just i don't know it puts a really bad taste then for anything to do with wanda i i think the first probably three 
or four episodes. I can't remember. Like once you start to get a glimpse outside of the town and you get you break out of that sitcom mold, um, that's when it starts to fall apart. Like well, part, actual, yeah, yeah, you can I, find I, I, the stream I like from back then. Few, yeah, we were, we were positive about it. Uh, yeah, yeah I like the the first few so the first few episodes. It was inventive. It was different. They they kind of got the style and the mannerisms and everything just down to a T. And I thought, well, cool. They're they're doing something nice yeah. and different here. Uh, then it just evolves into the same old like Marvel garbage, just on a smaller budget. You know. Yeah. Shame how it ended. I thought they were going like full on Twilight Zone with it. Have you ever seen Twilight Zone the movie or just Twilight Zone? I mm-hmm. thought that's like the approach they were going to take. I was so naive. Uh, Me that, too. Uh, I thought they were going to take it totally differently. Yeah. yeah. That would have been cool. Like yeah, it would have been cool. really out there. You know, that would have been that would have been nice. But we're we're not allowed that. It has to. It's like. They, they try so hard just to break out of that Marvel mold, but it always like grabs them and pulls them back and just squashes them down into like the same exact cookie cutter yeah. like formula again. Yeah. That'll teach you to try and have ideas. <laughs> yeah. All those diverse sidekicks and then the evil white man. And it was just, they, they took something so unique and then just completely broke it apart. Yep. I mean, I've said this before, like when, when it relates to, um, rings of power in particular but it's the same exact story with marvel i can predict whether a character will be good or evil basically based on their their demographic group at this mm-hmm. point uh like if they're trying to build up some like hidden um enemy or some hidden evil person it'll be the white guy i, I can guarantee it because like that's the only demographic that's safe to turn into a villain at this point and so <laughs> It makes it quite hard for them to hide who the guy's meant to be when I know what what their rules are, what they have to operate under. And we uh, need to get past that, man, because that is, I mean, I didn't come up with this saying, but it's, it's an old saying. It's the bigotry of low expectations. Uh, it is a form of bigotry in writing. So, like, you're not going to give any other character complexity a chance to win a war. I mean, like, you're basically coddling uh, people like children based on their skin color. That, that is the very definition of bigotry. So, yeah, hopefully we can get past this and, like, everybody can be a bad guy. Anybody can be a good bu- guy. You know, gay people can die and stuff. They can die and stuff, believe or it or not. Or they can be bad. You or know? they can be bad. Uh, or they or don't have to just be yeah. vapid and talking about your outfit and be there to pump you up. Like, that's how it is in She-Hulk. I think that's it. Yeah. I yeah. Just, yeah. Um, a little stereotype. sure that... Yeah. Yeah, for a show that wants to try so hard to break stereotypes and, um, and you know <laughs> portray women as like more you know rounded, fleshed out characters, like they're doing a really terrible job of it because like the characters in this are the most superficial, bland, like um, narcissistic morons that you could ever picture. I, and it's funny because they think they're doing a great thing, but they're doing the exact opposite. And uh, you know, I I get a lot of I'll get a lot of private messages of people who are brown or black and the, or you know specifically women who are brown and black and they'll get they'll be very angry with me and say why are you doing this why are you talking against female creators female characters or even just you know females out in the world and it's it's because i refuse to accept that the best that women can be are vapid narcissists and that's what they're selling to us that's what they're trying to turn us into is that you're not allowed to be criticized at all because if you are that means you know someone's trying to keep you down that's the only reason and if you look at the world that way you're actually going to have a very terrible unhappy life you're going to live a terrible life you won't have a good partnership with anybody not with your family, not with your children. You won't have a good partnership with someone you'll walk through life with. You'll just really struggle. Yeah. And that's it's obvious that so many are right now. That's the sad thing, honestly. Uh, but, yeah, it's, it's it, it, what it's always been, especially with uh, the, God, just the mental illness on social ne- media is the problems in the mirror. The, there is problems that, we, you know, you have to deal with internally. Uh, I'm glad I didn't have social media when I was younger. Oh God, I know, yeah. I know. Oh yeah. We're all lucky in that. I I think about our kids. You know, they're gonna grow up with it right off the bat. My my little niece, she's a year and a half, and she knows how to for you know forward. She knows how to skip ads. She she's so it's so to her the technology is so intuitive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's it's the way. It, uh, I don't know how can you put it. Like it's uh, it saturates your thoughts. 
at a certain point like if you let it absorb you um where you think oh any, any event that you take part in anything you're doing it's like wow i've got to post this to social media because i'll get loads of likes and retweets mm-hmm. and stuff and it's like it's so important like you can't just experience anything just in the moment it all has to be shared and you know then you have to give your thoughts about everything and oh this one didn't go this one didn't land very well and i'm getting pushed back and now i have to argue with like 500 different people um it's yeah it can absolutely suck people in and before you know it you're just uh you're spending your whole life doing it um, yeah awful elizabeth stuff elizabeth olsen is really good about that where she's doesn't really use social media a lot but she actually identifies that that when you're a celebrity and then you have social media you start to think as if you're this very important person that people are waiting for you to say something. Um, so if so, you know someone passes away or something, you know, a school shooting happens, God forbid, then oh, people are just waiting on tender hooks for you to comment on yeah. it. And she said that that injection into your thought process really starts to mess with you and makes you think of yourself differently and look at yourself with this filter. So she just she just doesn't do it. She just doesn't engage with social media. And, Instead, she'll post like if she does post that thing, she posts unflattering photos of herself that the paparazzi caught, which I think is so great. It just shows that she doesn't look at herself as this perfect thing that she needs to put out. I think that people need more of that. Yep, they really do. Um, yeah, like actors in particular. Like I don't know when we reached this point where actors suddenly decided that they had to one be political activists and two be like pundits and two give like their opinions on like geopolitical and economic issues that they're totally not qualified to discuss um but when they're receiving awards for acting that's when they're like it's time yeah. to talk about the climate you're like wait what <laughs> it's just it's the film actors guild from from freaking it, it, america totally like that's all it is <laughs> <laughs> they called it like 20 years ago like when they made oh, that <laughs> a lot of things it's a, almost a perfect movie it's almost yeah. um, <laughs> chat you're right there are there's bad gay people there is Dahmer okay you're right chat that's there is yeah but that's they've had to uh, they've had to take away some of the tags from that apparently because it portrays gay people in a bad light and it's like well he was a gay serial killer like but that that wasn't the reason he was a serial killer it's just mm-hmm. like that's an aspect of his character and he used that to prey on victims um you can't hide it and if you do what's the point in like telling the story in that case because it's a really good show like the performances are great the writing's great from what i understand it's like dead accurate to what actually happens so like it's it's an interesting watch but you can't shy away from what it actually is and what he was as a person sorry slight segue did you did you all see the documentary they made on netflix about the murder on the submarine that happened i think in Denmark. Do you no. know about this? No. I think I saw it advertised. I didn't watch it though. Okay, you, you should check that out. All all of you, I think you'll find it really interesting. I saw it a few days ago and it, it was it's been playing on my it's one of those experiences of a psychopath that you just go you know, do we do we understand psychopaths at all kind of thing. It was, it was very interesting. I won't give anything away. Cool. Except yeah. that there's a murder. Ah. Wow, you pulled the whole thing. <laughs> so well, I'm is- watching it there. Sounds cool. And no, we don't understand psychopaths at all. And I don't think uh, we, well, we 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 encounter them every day on Twitter. So we really do. <laughs> we should understand them by now. I think maybe there's uh, one amongst us, and we don't even know. There, there could be Mahler. Yeah, Gary. Mahler. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of us never shows his face. Yeah. <laughs> How do you know that's Gary's real face? <laughs> In a minute more, you got corpses strung up behind you. We know the truth. <laughs> Oh, like one. Why would that matter? It's fine. <laughs> I wanted to find a like a really old middle aged alcohol uh, recovering alcoholic B tube thingy app, whatever the fuck the kids call it. That's what I am. Yeah. I well, just destroyed that, but it's all right. It's a skin mask. Yeah, somebody else's skin though. Hello, everybody. <laughs> or just a really good mask. deep fake. Yeah. <laughs> but well, I think we all agree, like serial killers, they are evil. But you know what's even more evil? Uh-oh. Disney, Disney Marvel? No, it's oh. people who criticize the Rings of Power. Oh, of course. As of course as I've discovered, so allow thought. me to yeah. allow me to share. Well, Special <laughs> place in hell for those people. Yeah. According to the showrunners for for Rings of Power, these these absolute intellectual colossi right here, <laughs> JD Payne and Patrick McKay. Uh, the Rings of Power showrunner accuses shows critics of being patently evil, sir. 
So basically, if you don't like this, you're a bad person. Um, and I think we can all get behind that, can't we? Because, you know, we all love it. Obviously. Uh, I don't mind being patently evil, sure. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of uh, in your, it, yeah, it's part of the brand. So you're like, I, yeah, damn, cool. Yeah. It's uh, cringe. Well, it's cringe. I'm like, this is, oh, God, before you get started, there is, this is, for one, this is the bounding, uh, hail bounding into comics, but the, the Hollywood Reporter article is a, it is like a half hour read, uh, multiple paragraphs of them trying to cope. It is damage control. It is pure <laughs> damage control. It's funny, that was the one I'd selected initially, and then I saw the length of it, and I thought, nah, <laughs> I, need, I need something that, shorter. Uh, Founding does a great job of of uh, getting the quotes. I don't know if they put in the quote of the best one, which is towards the end, which is absolutely the best one. Do you know which one I'm talking about, Mahler? Did you, have you read it? I haven't read it, no, I haven't heard the quotes. The part where they say Amazon is shitting their pants? Oh. No, I haven't seen that. Wait, well, I see yeah, if, I, if it's in there. If it's not in there, then, we'll, then I'll take you over to it and I'll get to the quote because it's absolutely the best quote in the uh, whole article. Uh, no, the, the, well, the quotes here that they've given us is like, for example, when Amazon released po pic photos of its multicultural cast, even without character names or plot details, the studio endured a reflexive attack from trolls, the anonymous online kind, which is, you know, basically anyone on the internet, really. Um, but I think a lot of that was, hey, you, you've put you've put different ethnicities into places and cultures that they absolutely don't make sense to be in, um, and you've not explained why they're there. But hey, I guess it's okay because this show has to reflect the world we live in today. Um, yeah, the whole reason Tolkien wrote the series was to be the myth mythological ancient story of their people, of the British people. He did, and well, he gave very specific descriptions of the different races what they looked like and so on and you know rightly or wrongly you might feel that that's not um, representative of our modern culture but it wasn't meant to be it was representative of a fantasy culture that he came up with himself mm -hmm. um, and as other people have argued pretty effectively you go and you go ahead and change that now without any explanation and get it to try and fit in with the the, the multicultural society we live in which is all perfectly fine nowadays um, but if you try and alter something like this without any explanation or justification, it's shit. It just becomes pandering. It becomes something that was done for political rather than artistic reasons. And that's what people are pushing back against. Yep. So you get these projection kind of quotes here saying, obviously there was going to be push and backlash, but the question is from whom? Who are these people that feel so threatened or disgusted by the idea that an elf is black or Latino or Asian? And this is the this is the thing that pisses me off, right? No one's threatened by it, and no one's disgusted by it. They're annoyed by the fact that you're blatantly altering the story and you're altering the world that you're working within to suit your own purposes. You're doing it to reflect our world, but it's not the world that this is supposed to be happening in. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. That's what people are pushing back against. Absolutely, and they're pushing a ba back against this because they lied. They came out and said the Tolkien estate is involved in this, and we're just going to show massive respect to Tolkien. And then, like, we're six episodes in, and that is just a bold faced lie. They they are not even using the lore. The lore is a slight backdrop. We'll use a name here and there. Then we'll give you an origin to Mordor, which is just the most bad reboot thing I can possibly think of. I mean, these are the people that remade A New Hope <laughs> with The Force Awakens. They redid Wrath of Khan with Into Darkness. So let's just uh, re... And uh, did, did you see in the article, it says they throw shade at HBO. Uh, I got a video coming out tomorrow. I'm spoiling on it. So what? Um, they throw shade at HBO by saying, well, HBO came to them first and just wanted to remake Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. But the estate balked at that. So what they accepted was a remake of Lord of the Rings in the Second Age. Because that's what this is. You got yep. a female fam, Sam, Frodo. You got to stand in for the ring. You got freaking the origin of Mordor. It's so fucking stupid. Sorry, but that it's the that was the dumbest episode. The last episode was so oh, yeah. freaking well, just Well, you know what? I, I've learned so much about how volcanoes erupt. I've discovered that if you pour water onto lava, it doesn't cool it down. It actually makes it explode. So I'm going to go start yes. a volcano. I'll be right back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. What happens if it rains really heavily in Mordor? Is that it? Just... <laughs> Uh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Here, here's 
Well, here's a here's a good quote here saying, "What are they protecting?" I don't see how people who are saying that these things uh, think that they're fighting for good. There's a line in episode seven where Galadriel says, "Every war is fought from without and within." That's a stupid line to say. Uh, there's a lot of stupid lines in this show. Even if you're fighting for something you think is good, if you do something worse in that fight, then you become evil. I don't see how people who are saying these things think that they're fighting for good. It's patently evil. Now, sir. Patrick McKay or J.D. Payne, I can't remember which one of you said it, but either one of you can shove this quote right up your arse. Like, this is bullshit. You don't get to decide what is evil in this context, okay? You don't get to project motivations onto the people that are criticizing your show. They are doing it for valid reasons, because you are taking the work of someone else who is your intellectual and creative superior, and who you will never, ever possibly equal, and you are fucking it up. For no other reason than because you bought the right to do it. You didn't earn it, you bought it. Okay? And that's a very important distinction here. And you're destroying what he created. Little by little, episode by episode, scene by scene, you are fucking ruining it. Because of your own incompetence and your own inability to see by to see past the world that you're in right now. Your inability to have any creativity or to project your mind beyond this bullshit that we have around us right now. That is your failing, sir, not ours. I think um, well, one of the ways to test this sort of thing is to take their position and see, do you think if the, uh, how do I put this, like the reverse would be happening if the reverse... Uh, information was coming in so they, they they're like you know it's it's it's, crit it's not that it's criticism it's that it's awful criticism including racism whatever, whatever it's like okay so what if praise was coming in but it was racist the praise was i love this show so much because um i don't know the, there's there's mostly white people and i way prefer that because i hate black people so i love this show do you really think they'd be like the praise for the show is evil like no no they they would happily ignore it they'd be like oh that, that's just a couple people saying weird things uh you know and they happily conflate that and in the article lindsey weber no jennifer sulky the head of the studios by the way they put out multiple articles yesterday so they put a big one out about her 700 million dollar now it's not a billion dollars anymore it's 700 the, the numbers keep changing uh it's a billion dollar show and like basically it's a big fluff piece but at the end it should say her job is on the line right now. And for <laughs> J.D. Payne and Patrick McKay, because they were forced within that article to admit that the show is slow. They actually admit that it has that that it doesn't have the urgency. But they admit failure. They absolutely this whole thing is admitting failure. But later on, she conflates that there is, you know, valid criticism, but we're not worried about it because it's doing well in the rest of the world, although we're not going to provide you any numbers to back that statement up. We're very yes. happy with it. And while there is criticism, uh, you know, it basically, uh, Tolkien also attracts a certain type of fandom whose ideas we wouldn't believe in. in. In other words, in other words, the Tolkien attracts fascist bullshit, which they put in the article as well. Yeah. Like this article is just full of every every plot point of Disney Star Wars and and Ghostbusters 2016's attack the fan. It's the bingo card that Master TDS always puts up on Twitter. It's everything. Ah, it was so beautiful that it came out yesterday. It felt like a gift. It felt like Christmas early, to be honest with you. I was like, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm gonna have a field day with this one. Yeah. It's uh, so interesting though. Like, I guess yeah. if you take if you take this into into its entirety, right, like the marketing campaign for this show right from the off, it's like they've made every wrong move possible. Mm -hmm. They've done everything possible to alienate the fans. And every like disastrous trailer that they've lurched from trying to go like different directions, trying to show you different things, trying to put shitty soundtracks on top of it to make it all like moody and, and, uh, and emotional and stuff. None of it has worked because you have pissed off the people that you tried to win over. Uh, or I, well, I say you tried to win them over. You didn't really. You you pissed off the people that you should have tried to win over. Uh, and it's what did they expect? W with so much animosity towards this show, nobody was going to give it a chance at this point. I mean, it doesn't help that it is actual garbage at the same time. But but that um, could have shut us all up immediately. Mm -hmm. What shut us up with House of the Dragon? Yes, like, like it's happy. good. Uh, it's, it's actually dude. good. And it's we had all that baggage that we were carrying around from Game of Thrones, 
and we I, toss that aside. I, I'm happily like sitting here eating crow on this one because I've got a, a you know a, a clip of us in live stream talking about it and me confidently saying like, well, no one's going to give a shit about this show. It's dumb. Mm -hmm. uh, why why have we gotten a prequel to a series that ended on such a bad note? It's just another thing for George to do so he doesn't have to write rain, Winds of Winter. Yep. Uh, that part's I think true. it's going to no. suck. And sure. well, here we are. I'm I was wrong on that one. Called it wrong. It's been good. It's been really good, and it's getting better with every episode. And I'm I'm pretty invested in it now. Um, to be fair, that there were some elements of those first two episodes. I would say that I think I I can't remember if there was a live stream that you you boys did that I think Gary said that I wish um uh Rhaenyra hadn't had this victory so easily getting the egg back from Damon that you know had been more earned I can't remember if you said it or someone else said it but um and that I was starting to worry about that that were they going to just make her this perfect person I was too yeah we and don't have and to they worry about that she anymore. is most yeah. definitely not a perfect person yes. no. she's not she's not at all she's actually a, a realistic person not just one facet of of existence well, so what? that article that was like, how can I root for anybody in Rings? Of, uh, sorry, House of the Dragon when they're all evil? I was like, holy shit, man! I don't even, I don't even, I don't even think of them that way. A lot of these characters, even even the evil decisions some of them make, I'm like, oh, you got to understand why. You can't just be like, you're all evil. I, I don't want any of you on the throne. Ah. <laughs> that's, I think that that's what's going to be the tough thing about like scripted entertainment. What we're dealing with is there's too much um literal that like people are just trying to really project the real world on Westeros, which is supposed to be a middle ages, like the worst of the worst middle ages. It is a patriarchal society. Women are second class citizens. That's part of the world. Those are the rules of the world. And anytime a woman tries to step out of that, she gets slaughtered. She gets absolutely slaughtered. Or when they occasionally get to the throne, there's so there's so much baggage that they end up being terrible. They end up being absolutely terrible because that's what the world is. That's what the world is. And they, people are keep on trying to imprint their own like atheist beliefs. And like, it's crazy. Some of the shit I see online being projected on on uh, House of the Dragon. Like the, the, dude, this is. Yeah, this is this fundamental look lack it. of understanding where it's like yeah. things like, say, marriage in the Middle Ages. You, you do not look at it in the modern context of like two people fall in love and they get married because no. they want to spend the rest of the these unions, particularly amongst like royal families and like influential people, they were political business partnerships. That's all they were. And you cannot think of them in the modern context, but that's what they're trying to project onto stuff like this. It's it's so Even the show handheld held those people still. The show was like marry for love, Rhaenyra, and then a bunch of things go wrong and it's like you can't do that anymore and the everybody in this bloody realm has to do these things. Even with that, people were like, Wow, Rhaenyra's the hero and everyone else is the villain because she wants to marry for love. Which by the way, I wouldn't say that's what she's after with what we've seen. She's the, she's after the throne. I mean, she wants it. Like this is, I, I, don't know, I just think some people. Yeah, she was never after love. Yeah, she just. That was the mind blowing thing, I, and I've stopped trying to read reviews from random people on Twitter at this point. Is the whole like I hate Alison. She's the worst person ever, and Rhaenyra is like the hero. I was just like, how? Do, <laughs> no, how do no, how but that's what's that. great about the show is that you can yeah. see the good and bad in both of them, and it's interesting that people are jumping to, oh, everyone's bad, because that is kind of the perspective that people take these days, is that it is very black and white thinking. I'm great, you're bad. You know, it, it's like if you do one wrong thing, you're canceled. There's no concept of nuance or apology or like learning from your mistakes. Everything is is just, is just like- I would, I would well, argue if there wasn't like I a day- finish that sentence, sorry. Oh, sorry, go on. No, no, no! I was just so got so stuck in my own anger. I couldn't even finish that. <laughs> <laughs> that happens to me all the time. Uh, if there wasn't a Damon, this would be a different show, though. Like, you know, the, the Game of Thrones had like some like Sir Davos, Jon Snow. There was like good people. There were still good people to work. There's none of that here. I mean, the last two just died with the strong. Sorry, spoilers. But the, you have Damon, like this freaking wild card rogue that people can't predict. That's what's really still yeah. hold the whole thing together yeah uh, I, I think Eamon coming in so yeah, I mean how much really of that is down to, to like Damon partly being played by just a really good charismatic actor who just yeah. like draws your attention because yeah Matt Smith absolutely knocks it out of the park with him I mean I agree but I also 
I really like Eamon's character. He's an absolute chaos agent, basically. Yeah. How, how do you? It's really cool to have a guy who's simultaneously ego driven and power hungry, but also will not compromise anyone in his house because he considers the Targaryens so important, mm -hmm. and the Valerians, Valerians rather. So anyone from Valeria, really. But yeah, seeing this character wrestle between trying to reach for power at the cost of his family members, but also simultaneously can't bring them down in doing it. He keeps like going back and forth between all of these really big choices. And what's cool is whenever he sets his mind to like a big plan that he's committed to, it usually works. Um, even sometimes to his detriment as he realizes as he goes forward. I actually really like him, and I think it's it's what a fantastic choice to have Matt Smith play him. Yep. Yeah. When, uh, Drinker, when you and I had had our stream, we, we had talked a lot about what makes a man very, very attractive to women, right? We were talking about James Bond. Because clearly I'm the world's expert on this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Not that I am either, so it's all good. Yeah. But uh, I think something about Damon's character, that, that energy that he has, it is, it is hard to gauge where he's at. And there's you can see that there's existence of both good and evil within him but when it comes to the evil side or like as as a psychologist would put it like his shadow so like you can tell it's very integrated he's very in control with it and that energy is very powerful and very attractive i i think um the the interesting thing about him is that um there is agency with him there's the ability to actually um, formulate plans and see them through um, there's a like you say a chaotic element to him as well where like to some extent he's driven by his emotions his ego uh, he doesn't always make the best decisions um but he has the ability to see things through um, and he he feels like the classic bad boy character he is a dangerous man yes um and you know I guess women will know better than I will whether that's attractive or not, but it seems like that's the essence of like a masculine character is that combination of intellect and danger and unpredictability. Yeah, because uh, as, a, as a woman, you want a man that knows when to be good, but you also want someone who's dangerous enough to protect you and your household. And I know, again, very, very ancient thinking, clearly, but I, I truly believe that you want a man that can hold his own. I think Jordan Peterson talked about this, didn't he? Where it was like um, the, the essence of, of a man or what he can be or what his role is, is almost like controlled evil. Because it, be it's a, a guy who's got, well, yeah, he's got the ability to be dangerous and the ability to inflict violence, but he's got the self-control and the restraint to not do it unless it's necessary. Exactly. Uh, whereas like what you have now with most of the characters that are presented is that they don't have that ability um you, you look at most male characters in marvel films or disney films or, or pretty much any mainstream studio now uh they they don't have agency they don't have danger and they don't have um well balls really no any, any of the elements that make them a man they, they yeah. don't have it they are just wimps yeah and they're being whatever. carried they're being carried to the bedroom yeah and i think this yeah, and this is this is, I guess, where where they go wrong because you end up with a fundamentally unsatisfying story and unsatisfying characters for the audience. The men don't have things that they can look up to. They don't have characters that they can aspire to be, and women don't have characters that they find actually appealing or attractive. So nobody wins. Nobody wins. You know, uh, this a, a comparison. This might make you laugh, but uh, Damon Sauron. I'm sorry, Halbrand is supposed to be like Damon. In the Rings of Power. Damn, dude. Oh, <laughs> that's what it's supposed to. But it, they night and day. It is night and day. So, uh, and what you were just talking about those the the, the Numenori. I don't know if you saw uh, the the fight, but like they're just like they're they're frumpy little boys. You know, they're like not in shape. They're like uh, they're like YouTube. I said this. It, like, they, yeah, they are yeah. like skinny teenage boys in yeah. plastic armor. Like, where are the men? Where are the big, fucking bearded? <laughs> muscular yeah. men that have fought people that are hardened by battle and hardship and are dangerous and look like Which, they could fucking kill you. It's funny you say that because even Rainey's was describing all the men as uh, balls full of seed, the summer nights sort of thing. Like even the show is like these guys suck. <laughs> like, yep. Yeah. 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 Those were those early episodes that I was like, are they going to just be dunking on men the whole time? The, but... This, I, yeah. Yeah. This is what is lacking in, in shows like Rings of Power, right? Is 
um, this desire to make every character young. And so, uh, apart from Elendil, who's like played by a good actor, but I still think they cut his balls off for most of mm -hmm. his scenes. But um, apart from him, all of the, the male characters, they're, they're all very young. And so young men don't have a great deal of gravitas to them. They don't have a great deal of authority and charisma. Um, and so you're lacking that. There's just there's no proper men in the show. You've got boys, a collection mm. of boys who've, who've got no real authority and power to them. Yeah, no Aragorn type character. Exactly. Yeah, no. Except they made him Halbrand, except Sar Sauron, and he's the king of the Southlands. Uh, the good news we got out of that article in passing, because they rushed season two in a production that started two days, three days ago, three days ago, uh, because it's a reaction to this season. They know it just was a total disaster. But the showrunner said it's going to be a couple years. They're going to work on the next season for a couple years. Can you That's imagine? This translation is like, we know we fucked up. We need to rewrite uh -huh. everything. <laughs> Panic time. In that article, the first paragraph, they're like, we're gonna have two, we're gonna have a two episode battle sequence. Oh my god. And, it's and, Game of Thrones season eight again. Where they're Guy like Ladriel, Guy Ladriel has a quiver of arrows this time. So she's gonna be fucking shooting arrows. Guy Ladriel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, when, when we've, when we've, yeah, when we've talked about things like, um, you know, the Fellowship of the Ring and stuff, uh, the Battle of Amon Hen goes on for like, what, five, ten minutes? Like, it's pretty pretty quick. Um, but it's great because it's got characters in it that you care about. There's a lot of yeah. emotion involved. Um, and, and it's well awesome. done. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It doesn't need to It doesn't need to be this big epic confrontation every time. Yeah. Um, even, even with the second movie, they worried about the Battle of Helm's Deep going on too long. So they did their best to really intercut it and give people a break because you really can't be in a battle for that long visually. No. Yeah. It, yeah. It becomes it becomes exhausting after a after a time. And Can I... spectacle is no substitute for writing. It's no yeah. substitute for character. Yeah. Can I rant for a second about yeah. Guy Ladriel? We, we welcome rants here. Okay, I, as as the three of you know, but the audience doesn't know, I decided not to watch Rings of Power at all. I love Lord of the Rings. I've like devoured the movies for for the last twenty years. So I just decided not to watch it so it wouldn't ruin it for me. But the part that really bugs me, you know, obviously I'll see tweets and stuff and headlines. That obviously, the show's not doing well. And what I hate is how they present Galadriel. Because in Lord of the Rings, Galadriel was this ultimate female, beautiful character. And this is what we were talking about earlier, that the only way to now be a powerful character for a woman is to get turned into a man. That she has to wield a sword in order to be considered with any sort of respect, because that's the only way now. And it really sucks because in the movies, they did such a beautiful job of showing her femininity and her beauty and her wisdom. And that she had the, the powers that she possessed were inherently very feminine powers of perception, of being able to see through people, understand people, understand their motivations, see how things were going to play out before they were going to play out. And that is what made her a wonderful female powerful character and she didn't have to pick up a sword and they ruined all of that it's they did not understand that at all yeah i mean it's, well it, you know perception is one thing but she can explode orcs upside down on a horse yeah <laughs> i mean cool. <laughs> sorry, sorry for, con for context baggage claim that's an action scene in the final episode that <laughs> that's a thing that actually like, happens fyi i'm she, learning she, so much from you guys about what's actually happening on the show the thing what? is we would describe it to you what? and you would think like yeah these guys are bullshit and me like none of this stuff could possibly happen but it, it absolutely does <laughs> But you're right about Galadriel. You know, she was an, an incredible presence in those in the Peter Jackson movies and in the books as well. Um, she didn't need to be physically dominant in order to be a powerful character because she had the ability to to make someone almost melt before her just by looking at them. She had that power of charisma and um, and presence about her, um, and like you say, she had the perception of who a person was and what they might become. Uh, that's a powerful thing. It doesn't need all this other stuff, but it's like this simple-minded view of what a character is to be strong. They have to be physically strong. They have to be able to swing a sword just as strong as a big burly guy. 
that or that's... even sit like a man she, she like even on on that on those promo photos they did she was man spreading and it's it's unbelievable that that's what that's what it it has to be mhm and calling that out as sexist, it's like, what? You have a woman sitting like a dude with her dagger uh, sitting in for the Johnson. It, it is like the most blatant thing. And then you're trying to tell us how much respect you would have for Tolkien. He would be pissed. He would be so pissed. He would hate this. And it's disgusting. It's actually a disgusting display of vandalism. You know, like Peter Jackson got it right when when Galadriel, I, was, I don't want to say Guy Ladriel, the real Galadriel, yeah. she cuts through Boromir. How does she cut through Boromir? What is what is the what does she tell him? That there's hope. hope. There's hope still remains hope. while the fellowship still remains hope. true. Yep. But there's still I hope think. as long as everything stays true. But he's so broken and black pilled from his yeah. dad and everything that he's seen from Gondor. They breaks him, man. Like it breaks it, him. That's power. That's the real power. Yeah. That is real power, and I can't believe that this is what they've supplemented it with. Yep. But and and then you know, Tolkien underst also understood that there are aspects of femininity that are very feminine, and then women are also capable of going into the province of men and ride into war, like like um, Eowyn did. And he showed both aspects of that that she was she, she did what another woman may not. This is the interesting thing, right? Because this was really well built up in the books and the movies where mm -hmm. Eowyn, like in the, the culture of the Rahirim, women don't go to war. And it's the same with every culture because, you know, with all due respect, like they're not that well suited to fight in battles. Like if they're up against a guy twice their size, they're going to get their asses kicked. So probably they shouldn't be doing it. Um, but she wants to do it. She wants to fight for her, her country. She wants to serve and um, she feels this calling to do it. Um, so she disguises herself as a man. She goes up against one of the most terrifying opponents you could possibly fight, the Witch King, um, and stands her ground, even though she's absolutely terrified of him. You know, and he, he breaks her arm, destroys her shield. Um, but she's able to have that, that moment where she gets an opening and, and is able to kill him. Uh, and it's brilliantly set up. It's brilliantly played out. It's it's perfectly done. It it is very honest about you know what was expected of women in societies like this, but also what they can be capable of in the right circumstances. Um, awesomely done. Well. Yeah. The, um, it's so beautifully handled because I think it's only in the extended you get all of this. I can't remember. I'd have to check, but. Obviously, the implication that Mary or herself are going to go into war, the men are like laughing at it. Like, mm -hmm. so we doing idiots. Like, but, and the, I think a more cynical person might be like, wow, they hate women and people who aren't tall or something. But, um, man, does it come full circle when you get uh, Carl Urban's fantastic performance when he sees that she's in the fight? It's oh, like, well, uh, he, I remember well, it's he, he explains. Of, he, there's a, a great scene with him earlier talking to her about this because she wants to go to war and he convinces mm -hmm. her not to, or, you know, he, he thinks he has, saying, like, look, it's the province of men and we don't do this because we love it, but it's our duty, it's our role, mm -hmm. and be thankful that you don't have to do it. Yeah, what I'm yeah. saying is a cynical person could be like, he actually just yeah, hates yeah. women is what it is, but right. like, you see an emotional, distraught ailment, like... In yeah. the middle yeah. of, you know, the battle's over for the most part. People are walking around. He does that in front of everybody because he cares about it so he's, much. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't. And he describes to her the fear of going into war. And that's exactly what she experiences, his unbelievable amount of fear. And what shakes her out of it is seeing that her uncle would, would be devoured by that creature. Mm -hmm. And that's what pushes her to overcome her fear because there's something that matters to her more than, than being afraid. And it was, yep. it was beautifully done. Well, there's a great shot where, like, she's standing in front of, she's standing between him and uh, Theoden, yeah. and yeah. like the, he he just drops this enormous mace that he's gonna swing at her, and she's like this little figure with like a sword and a shield standing in his way, and it's so fucking brilliant. Like, yes, for like a, a tiny physical presence, but she stood there saying, "No, you're not getting him. You're gonna have to go through me first. That is brilliant that's mm -hmm. like human we love to spirit. see it we yeah. love to see that shit in the behind the scenes when they were filming that scene the stunt man who was the witch king of agmar was constantly throwing this heavy weight against her and she she was like he was hearing her struggle so much and he kept hoping that 
Peter Jackson would call cut because he could hear just in how much distress she was. And he was like, cut, like, please cut. Like, it's hard for me yeah. to do this to her constantly. And she just pushed through it. Yeah. I remember again, that it, prop was incredibly heavy, right? Yeah. It was. Yes. I, they, they did a whole thing on the making of it. Well, it's a little piece on the making of it that. Special I'm sure more time was spent on that mace than all of She-Hulk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Watch those special features for Fellowship, the ones from oh. the the Blu-ray. Uh, Robert Ryder Burnett worked on those brilliant stuff. Brilliant yeah. stuff. Even but it's the great wolf. that we, like, you know, us talking about this here, like, you can see how how passionate we are about it and how enthused we are about characters like this because they're actually well done and they're well built up and the payoffs are worth it because the setup is so good. Um, and then you get something like Rings of Power, where now you're just pretending like, well, um, in the Numenorean army, for example, yeah, there's just women serve there. Like, there's no explanation for why they do. They just do. And, they're, they're and they just... disappear in the battle. They just completely disappear yeah. in the battle. Uh, but but you know, there. the best part was that was the big battle episode, and it got uh, it got just completely schooled by House of the Dragon and a bunch of kids fighting in a cave. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That, that was actually that. a better fight. It was, it was better coordinated. Had more. Uh, it, it built up all the characters pretty much in one little scene and had more impact on the entire on the entire series. That little that little cut of an eye has massive Whoa. impact on the entire series. Yeah, it's great. That, that had me wincing. That one, like when he's cool. like holding his hand against the blood's just absolutely like pulling out. And they got oh. the cut. Like when when it's not like. Guy Ladriel's five feet away from an exploding orc. We I accidentally paused on the cut, uh, cut up, and it looks yeah. like really good. It looks proper good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, some that of episode stuff was so dark. good. Yeah, some of the stuff was shot dark, and HBO's explanation oh, yeah. was fucking stupid, and they shouldn't have done that. Uh, you need to brighten your shit up a little bit. HBO, yeah, not turn on a fucking bad. lamp or something. Jesus, I could not yeah. see anything. But, Aside well, from I that, this, I had this problem with the episode six of rings of power like especially in the early stages where the the orcs get into the tower and stuff like i watched it in the daytime and i could not fucking see what was happening the, yeah the, you the gotta watch it was in awful pitch oh, black. yeah when we were watching it gary was, i was like i think you said like sorry it's so dark and i was like oh I, I i think it's like this they're trying to we're not supposed to be able to see right <laughs> it's at the point. but it goes on and on and on and it was like it was a sex scene so i'm like oh whatever but i wanted to see the dragon but uh i mean what the, what you know I, yeah. the dragon scene went like i went and saw it in my home theater but not everybody's got a home theater okay uh, yeah yeah gary yeah. keeps showing off why don't you yeah, I found out just how terrible do, this you, TV is from that episode. Yeah. Why don't you do this stream from your hot tub next? <laughs> I will be. Living the Ooh. life. Living yeah. the life. I mean, my wife got that for me for a present, so oh, I'm very awesome. proud of it. Yeah, that's yeah. Wonderful. All right. Nice. All right. <laughs> yeah, I but that episode, that I, I loved even the, whole, the post-funeral scene where... There's a lot of silence and a lot of people. You know, it was a lot of you know, the tension that was building up. It was it was really well done. <laughs> it was, and yes, it was the blue check mark chat. That's it. I got my own parking spot now. I need to be called your highness or your grace. <laughs> He's one of the boys now. Those are your pronouns. <laughs> uh, well, I got his my... royal highness. Yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, that last uh, that last episode, of House of Dragon, was so good. It was so it dangerous. Was, yeah. Like, yeah. Drinka, have you got a favorite character out of curiosity? Yeah. Well, I mean, my my temptation is to go for Vizares just because I love Paddy, and um, I just so you know, he's just such a nice guy, and I feel so bad for him. Yeah. And like you know, he's just he's a good man trying to do his his best in a really difficult situation. Um, but each of them has grown on me more throughout the series. Yeah. Like I didn't like Renera to begin with; I found her really annoying. But now I really like her. Um, I liked uh, I liked Allison right from the beginning because she seemed like you know uh, unfairly caught up in really shit um, situation. Obviously, she's got a more ruthless side now that's coming to the fore more because she's older and she's embittered. Uh, but I like her for that. I like the nuance to she's her. She's her father's daughter at this point. It, yeah. She really is, yeah. And uh, yeah, I like Damon as well. Partly because Matt Smith's performance is amazing, but partly he's just a really interesting multi-layered character. You know, he cares about his family. He cares about, um, you know, his responsibilities. 
Uh, but he's flawed. He's ruthless. He's he's uh, unpredictable. He's dangerous. Like all of these things, man. Like it's it's tough to pick between them all. I, I love the Renera fans just completely look over her and Damon like killing a guy, just some random guy in the castle, the double. Yeah. 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 He's yeah. a good guy. I'm like, they just killed an innocent guy. They're not doing it so that he could have a happy life. They're doing it for their own fucking interests. Yeah. 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 Well, it wasn't. Um, real quick. So after um in that Hollywood reporter article, there's the I don't see how these people who are saying these things think they are fighting for good they are patently evil the following two paragraphs are this is good this is really good uh nielsen ratings released in september 29th paint a highly successful launch roughly compatible with dragons roughly uh precise comparisons are nearly impossible because of several factors we won't bore you with like amazon not sharing actual real numbers uh yep. one industry insider familiar with amazon Fuck your ads. Amazon's inner workings suggest the other fantasy show's performance, speaking of House of the Dragon, is more anxiously followed than the company lets on. Oh, yeah. Quote, it was never about critics. It's all about consumers, the insider says. All Jeff cares about is consumer obsession. If you look at the history of Amazon, every division lived and died based on that. Dragon matters because all of a sudden there is a benchmark. It is their closest competition to success. When they saw Dragon grew in its second episode and it brought in 20 million viewers, they were shitting their pants. That's in the Hollywood Reporter. Wow. I love that. Book. I love, yeah, that's yeah. brilliant reporting yeah. for once. Uh, that's, yeah. so, that's so telling, man. It really is. Even if uh, it was proven that Ring to Power had more eyes on it than House of the Dragon, it doesn't change the fact that one of them is shit and one of them is pretty good yeah, like, correct well i mean th these are according even according to this article which did like after like fluff of fucking a fluffing amazon they put that that in there and then they follow it with uh jennifer Salky saying i don't really care um they're supposed these shows are supposed to be looked at as equal so forget all the fucking numbers just listen to your listen to yourself listen to your own ears li believe your own eyes if they're yes. equals are are, are the, uh, how is one being perceived in the fandom uh, ones like we have memes coming back to Game of Thrones. We have free folk. The Reddit like has come back to life and the memes aren't making fun of the show. They are diving in as interest of the show. They're still like clowning on it a little bit, but not in the way of it sucks. It's no, we're interested and we're going to meme Viserys and put them on, you know, uh, Ben Affleck's face, smoking cigarettes. That, that kind of interest is being generated with House of the Dragon to the other side with Rings of Power, where it's just being clowned constantly. It's being trolled. It's being dragged because it's shit. So there's no way you can tell me these shows are equals. They're not. That Like, one is absolutely being adored right now, which I, it's inexplicable to me at this point. That uh, And there's still people who are really resistant. And Rings of Power is just getting shat on everywhere it goes. Everywhere it goes. It's undeniable. Well, I think as well, like, the on paper, Rings of Power should be absolutely dominating. You yep. know, it's it's it got access to like the the most popular fantasy property of all time ever in all of hum, human civilization. Then you've got House of the Dragon, which is a prequel to a once popular show that had a disastrously awful ending that like alienated so many fans. It should have been a failure in the making, but yeah. it's it's won people back through the the quality of its writing. The, the work that's gone into it, um, the fact that they've they've increased their viewership episode on episode, they are winning people back because they are doing well. They have produced good work. Um, Rings of Power, I would hazard a guess, has gone in the exact opposite direction. The first couple episodes, I would imagine they were massive because people were at least interested to see it. Once they saw it, they realized how shit it was. It's absolutely cratered. I bet. They won't release the numbers, but that's that's the direction it'll have gone. That's the difference between terrible writing and, and good writing. Yeah, and I, it's sad that it's going to have, you know, a second season, but I, House of the Dragon is just a one shot, right? It's just one season? No. Three no, seasons. I think that's going wow. on, yeah. Oh. Three, uh, three or four. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. If it goes well, they're going to be so fucking sad that it's not a Game of Thrones level thing they could adapt. Because once it ends the third season, they'll be like, oh man, we need more. 
Well, they've, yeah, got other, they've got like five other spin-off Game of Thrones shows, haven't yes, they? Yes, but you won't be able to grab up any of these people, right? Like, this is the thing. I think they're gonna... They must be surprised, even a little bit, that people are uh, responding so well, because the vibe was not good between yeah. this show and the previous one, let's put it that way. They yeah. must be like, oh, thank fuck this worked. <laughs> because, I mean, yeah, as, as Dream was saying earlier, like, I was not enticed by the trailers. I was like, it's whatever. I can, I can, You know, they mm-hmm. look like the actors that are playing them. Yeah, there's some people I respect in here, and CG looks pretty good, I guess. But yeah, whatever. I watched the first episode, and I was like, eh. Yeah, it's it's all the stuff you remember. Politics, yeah. succession, fighting each other, boobies. But then another episode, you're like, hey, you know, can we talk about that thing and that thing? Yeah, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Third episode, ooh, that crab feeder fight. Oh, yeah, okay, Dave was pretty cool. Oh, you, you notice the little lines where they say this, 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 this. Even the, um, you know, s- sort of scene flaws, we go, oh, this wasn't so good. And then someone else goes, well, if you think about it, this, this, this. And then you're like, oh, shit. Actually, that makes a little bit more sense. Yeah. And then you find yourself, like, you, finishing episode seven, I was just like, oh, bad. I need just the rest so of the season now, please. Yeah. Like, I yeah. Need yeah. To see how this ends. Just so did, freaking did good. This just come, like, is this a, a serendipity, like, the time that it came out? Like, it came out at the same time as Rings of Power. And the fact that Rings of Power has been so shit, has it driven people towards this almost as an act of protest? Uh, I would say maybe, but I would also go as far as saying it was it was a glorious coincidence this came out because it proves a very, very strong point. Everyone's complaining that all the racists hate these shows just because of diversity casting or whatever. And then it's like both of these shows were shat on for that before they came out. One of them came out good, one of them came out bad. In terms of audience response, Why? And it's really hard for people who would call you a racist to square that away because they're like, ah, oh, you, uh, because, uh, because, because, because you just like that House of the Dragon is uh, that they might have to te- like like shit on House of the Dragon and be like House of the Dragon appeals to your more evil things, <laughs> something patented evil personality traits. You're like, oh, okay. The rationale was we moved the goalposts. So we could just use it to shit on the <laughs> ring of power. Like we're totally <laughs> faking that we like it or, or we're faking that we don't like rings of power. I, I don't know. Uh, and I honestly don't. The crazy think. part to me is that they see that as like a ev- evidence of like grifting where you go, I think this yeah. thing's going to be bad. And then you watch it and you go, that oh, wasn't bad. They're like, ha, grifter. You're like, what? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I think it does prove that as jaded as we've been with all the sort of nonsense coming out through Disney, through Marvel, through everything, like we're still as a fandom capable of being excited about something that is good. And we, even if let's say yeah. the initial reviews aren't great and we're not that excited about it. And then it, we come around and we actually enjoy it. We haven't turned into all just pessimistic people no. yet. Not and yet. Not yet. And and not everything in Hollywood has turned to total shit, although that could still happen. And I think we're all very cautious at this point. I don't even know how to say optimistic. I'll just say cautious. It's nice looking forward to Sunday and see if we'll get yeah. a good episode. But uh, uh, I'm not like I haven't recommended the show to people yet. I just say it's good. I'm watching it. But I don't know, man. I don't see know. how it goes but Let's you know what I, I do hate that they use the old Game of Thrones intro that actually really yeah. I, I always skip it because you know uh, there was like you know over eight years ten years we were watching that show and it was that build up every time and you would see that theme and now and then it would tell you where things are going to happen and you were excited mm-hmm. like oh maybe they'll move this story along and and you're waiting for all for, you know, in between seasons, you're dying to know what's happening next and you're so excited to watch. And then that ultimate letdown. And I feel like that it's like buried somewhere in my heart. I'm still carrying it around. And like every time I hear that music, it just takes me back to all of that crushed emotion. Like I don't want it associated with this. Like leave it behind. Give it its own theme. When they say a song of ice and fire in House of Dragon, I'm like, don't you say that name. (laughs) Keep I've gotten used away. to the theme. Uh, yes. They still should have used an original theme. I agree with that. But I've gotten used to it. But yeah, every time they bring up a song of ice and fire, Prince that was promised, I'm like, oh. stop it. But no. the <laughs> I would mean the uh, and I uh, know be it's careful show. I like you, but be careful. <laughs> be very yeah. careful. 
Yeah. Uh, but it does feeling feel like it's trying to be more book accurate by like there's still major changes to the even the the, the fake history book that they're adapting. There's still major changes. Some of them, but I'm fine with them because I didn't like the source material very much. I wasn't down with the book, so hopefully it's an improve. And, and like I, I, without telling you what the ending is, I don't know how they're going to end this. I don't, mm. I don't know where you end it. Like if you end it at a certain point that I won't say. Uh, wow. I don't think people are going to be satisfied with that. I just don't. So they're going do to have there's, to do Well, do you think there's that desire to um, stick with the same characters or will they move it even beyond them to like the next generation and the next to like bring it almost up to date with Game of Thrones, like finish up with the Mad King and like, I've Jamie never Lannister heard anything him. definitive. So I'm sure the, Thr the Game of Thrones channels know much more than I have because like I've really tuned George out because I can't handle him tweeting or not blogging about the effing giants. When uh, I want wins a winner, that's all I want. But uh, I did hear that it's it's possible it could possibly be an anthology if things go forward. Mm. You know, and, and I could see them doing that. Uh, thinking about it now, but then again, House of the Dragon doesn't. I suppose you could apply that right up to Robert's Rebellion. Absolutely, yeah, it's absolutely. Just the, that would be cool you, to see Robert's Rebellion. But you tell it. Say, you could totally see them the calling it Robert's Rebellion might be the more tempting option though. As its own. Well, you could call it House of the Dragon Roberts Rebellion. But you'd have to yeah, yeah. because but but calling it Game of Thrones House of the Dragon Roberts Rebellion. <laughs> <laughs> a song of Ice and Fire. <laughs> song of Ice and Fire. But you could definitely like tell a a a version of the story from the Mad King's perspective. Like mm, why did he go mad? There's lots of theories why he went mad. And for all the inbreeding, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> that point. And, um, part Brand. of it is having Brand. to deal with the fact that his hand was better at doing everything than he was right this is, that was time when he was like loved and mm. appreciated by like the realm and they were buds um, they were friends yeah it was isn't it correct me if i'm wrong gary you'll know better but it's um it's, when the mad king is kidnapped tywin saves him and he doesn't he get fired as a result of that because he's like so embarrassed at that point that his hand is getting like loved by the realm no he gets fired when he I think he gets dismissed. Oh my God, it's been a while. When he wants yeah. to. No, it wasn't betrothal. I thought it was betrothal. He was like bugging him up for betrothal. All I remember is this that uh, Tywin was, was getting too too liked. And uh, the Mad King did yeah, not like that. Yeah, and he gets fired. He gets replaced by um, Sir, Conn uh, Sir Connington, right? Sir Connington. Hmm. The Griffin. The Griffin. Uh, and who's more bold and he was more bold like Robert, but I think he, that was after he was replaced by another hand. There's like three hands that, uh, that, uh, Mad King goes through after Tywin, uh, to the point where no, when Sir Con, yeah, Tywin was already gone when, when, uh, yeah, I've seen some people say Tywin resigned. I'm gonna have to read up on my Tywin history, but yeah, it, that I would fucking get the right actor doing the Tywin history. That would be glorious. Yeah. But, but uh, Tywin was also ready to burn the King alive. Like he he said, you have a day. That was probably the good thing to do, though, considering and, what the Mad King was going to do. And Bar no, Barristan like said, "Hey, uh, the Barristan's like, I'm just going to burn this thing down, and we'll see what happens." And Barristan, <laughs> give me a night to go save the king. So that's why you know Barristan the Bold. He got the that name from a tournament, but like he went in there and cut his way through uh, Derry and yeah, saved the king and brought him back. But the kid, Tywin was ready to fucking kill him. I don't, so, I don't know. That's yeah, I might be mixing up my Tywin's history, character. Quick well, question. That, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, it, it, I'm probably mixing up my history because I need to read it over, but it, it, there's plenty to work with there, right? Is what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. And, uh, oh, and oh, it can yeah. relate it to the Targaryen specifically. So it's like, yeah, there's there's lots of ways this go. And man, they are earning back that favor. Do not fuck this up. Yeah, you've been warned. You're on thin <laughs> ice, but you're still you're still on top of it. Uh, I just have to comment on all the Wong chat. And yeah. <laughs> I love this. I think this is my personal favorite. It's a Wong de Fro Wong. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> now it's never going to end. Yeah. I know, yeah. Well, it was, it's, it's been, been going, going the for, whole time. Yeah, yeah, it's been going for 90 minutes yeah. already. So question, will House of the Dragons tell us sort of how the dragons end up declining going from these massive creatures to like, didn't they say that they're as small as house cat by the end? Yeah. 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 They get really small. Okay. Um, I mean, they dry Like you saw game of Thrones. They're all dead. And right. all the dragons are dead. I'm talking to chat. So like, yeah. The, um, yeah, that's, that's it. It's um, 
it's a Targaryen civil war that that damn near wipes out the entire family. Wow. Yeah, and yeah. The, the the implication right is like the the dragons being kept inside and kept controlled and kept mm. under the thing. He's like that combined with a possible attempt by certain groups of people to actually get rid of the dragons permanently. Mm. This is all I, stuff I always that... assumed that the, the dragons were almost like a reflection of the strength of the Targaryen dynasty. Like yes. the more oh. that declined, the more they kind of declined. Yep. yep. Very yep. interesting. Yeah. And it just kind of meandered on for a while until Robert's Rebellion when they're like, George has said this, is like, you know, we don't need Targaryens as kings. But um, I think the key... The big spoiler from Wins a Winner is that a Song of Ice and Fire thing being on the knife. I think that mm. is part of a spoiler from... No, I'm convinced that is part of a spoiler from the book, and it's almost been confirmed. George, that like that came from George. Oh. So he either made it up for the show, or it's like a huge thing from the book that he's been holding back that maybe he felt like he needed to put in there to give the show some urgency to connect it to the books, whatever reason, but that's a massive spoiler. Well, Say, I hate any reference to Game of Thrones for my own personal reasons. However, I appreciate that an element of the series' motivation is that he believes he's saving the world by getting his heir in place. And how I feel bad for him because Rhaenyra doesn't really give a shit about that at all. No. Yeah. And does that get passed down or does it get lost with her? Um, and because the the book uh we've all well if you've read fire and blood it's an unreliable narrator it could totally have a different ending they've already it, they've already done a couple of things really different from the book that you can still say are open to interpretation and did george r, r. martin say that he's going to actually end the book series differently from the show yep okay he said you saw you saw an ending but you didn't see the ending whatever uh. that means that that's cool. I don't Sorry know what the that. fuck I'm gonna do. It's just I know this wasn't popular, so I need to do yeah. something different. Bran still ends up on the throne, and it makes a little bit more sense of the book, but not much. He only got three chapters. <laughs> was there got- a comment from his actor recently where it's like yeah. he, he read that in the script and thought it was a joke? <laughs> <laughs> Bran the, the Broken is yeah. a joke. It's the biggest yeah. joke yeah. because he, ha- he has a better story. Oh, yeah. what, what, what gets often said it's just like it, it it's not that like Bran absolutely cannot end up on that throne it's going to be how you, how you tell that story but that seems hilarious if you watch it again with Tyrion this the the guy who was like on death row at the time was like yeah Bran should be king and everyone goes mm, okay yeah all right fine. yeah it's like what in the world what why is he talking <laughs> yeah that was just at the point where it's like the writers had just given up. It's like, oh, yeah. fuck yep. it. We just need a new king. Whatever. Brand's there. Let's just make him king. It's okay, Peter end Dinklage. it. Go. Yeah, man, yeah. Man, <laughs> man, man, man. He had like one yeah. of the best characters. And then suddenly like the, that character just turns into a massive idiot. Yeah, it's like if you were watching in seasons, I don't know, two, three, when everyone was super intelligent, like, there was so much subtlety and, and subterfuge going on. Could you imagine that that's what it's going to devolve into? Yeah. Never could People have seen this coming. Just, they gave us a setup, even a development, and then the payoff was like the complete opposite. Yeah. Even with what, you know, Daenerys is the biggest d- disappointment, of course, because they rushed it so, so much. But it is you, what made the earlier seasons really cool was seeing her rise. That was yeah. enjoyable. Like I think at a certain point she almost got stuck in a holding pattern because yeah. they weren't ready for her to go back to Westeros yet. So she just kept making like weird bad decisions that squandered resources. But yeah. yeah, like you knew something was gonna happen. Like you knew that there had to be a showdown between her and Cersei and, and everyone else who had a claim to the Iron Throne. Um and I'm not against the idea of her turning villainous because she's a Targaryen ultimately and that's kind of inbuilt, um, but it would have taken a lot more than what we were presented with to turn her down that path. Yes. Yeah, like her being incredibly cruel to someone like Cersei as a result of what's happened. It's like, yeah, I can believe that easily. Cruel to soldiers? Um, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Cruel to women and children running and screaming in fear? No, 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 you can't do that. It's like, come yeah. on, we've earned it. It's like, no, you haven't. <laughs> no. Yeah, that was, that was the stand she took consistently. Yeah, yeah uh, this, what this one of my favorite Daenerys scenes when she has to see that her dragons have scorched a little girl and she traps yeah. them for it. Yeah. Because she's like, finally yeah, that... understanding she can't just do whatever the fuck she wants, but then she does whatever the fuck she wants. And I was like, oh. 
Yeah, that oh, character wow. just vanished and got replaced with someone else, like wearing her skin suit. Yeah, yep, that, that's what we ended up with. <laughs> there was a meme that showed Jon Snow as a child, and then it's like, "My lord, he's not he's not drinking his milk." He keeps saying, "I don't want it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think everyone got sick uh, of Jon by wait, the end. Wait, there's oh, a, yeah. I don't want it in this last episode of House of the Dragon. Yeah, there was. Yep, yeah. uh, it was. Yes. <laughs> Was it Amund or no? It was one of uh, Rhaenyra's it was children. Luke. Yeah. It was Luke. Luke. Yeah. yeah, King one day, my lad. It. He's like, yeah. I don't want it. Yeah, I also thought that the whole whole part about um, Amund uh, sitting on Wagar for the first time was like very much how to train your dragon, like scene playing out. Definitely, uh, but that scene was fucking cool one of the best shots i've seen in game of thrones one of the best fantasy shots i've seen of just some little kid with his hand up to this giant fucking dragon that's just massive it was beautiful i love it, it would be if i could see any of it it just looked uh, like shadows i could uh, that one i could see i guess i could I, see that one yeah it worked out but in my home theater sitting in my jacuzzi <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, we're all invited for the next episode right yep, you're all invited so, okay. self-life of yeah. a youtuber right eh? <laughs> yeah, you're invited too come on let's go yes okay. I'm, I'm gonna fly in just for this yep. yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I was just thinking of actually about the previous episode where uh, Damon's wife, like obviously she's got a breech birth and she's uh, she's facing up to a similar situation to Viserys' wife from the first episode, and she just like rage quits. It's like nah, fuck it, I'm out. Just gets the dragon to incinerate her. <laughs> it's like yeah. holy shit, man. That was insane. Uh, that was a hell of a scene. You can when kind of she... understand the motivation behind it, but damn. Yeah, when she's when they're doing her funeral services. I had a question. There was a part where uh, someone's they were saying something over her her casket, and then Damon just laughs, and I didn't quite understand that. Oh, he was laughing at I think the and I think because they don't tell you. Uh, that's uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mahler, because you're more uh, perspective than I am. But uh, it was right when he said perspective. Pers I can't use the words. Perceptive. Right. perceptive. That's what oh, I, I was going to say. You should you mean obsessive? But yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> same thing, same thing. If you're a nerd, it's okay. Yeah, uh, you're just not tentacles. No, I think that's when um, Corliss's brother was saying the purity of the Valerian blood. It was, like, yeah, and uh, then he just kind of laughed at the, just laughed at the whole concept of that, and yeah. uh, especially with the king there you got to count like every, everybody being there the high towers and Renera with her bastards yeah the, you know and that's just how damon deals with uh with grief because he is sad he's actually he actually liked her he did absolutely yeah well it's he the said same like thing we, the... we were happy in our own way or something it's like or we were happy enough it's like not Remember love the there necessarily of, um, but you know he liked her one funeral where damon up to that point still the chaos element still kind of a dick and the, the mum's died and it's like well, what's he gonna say and then Rhaenyra has like a great line where she says i hope the the uh, the hours that my brother lived gave my father happiness like in a very bitter way of course because she blames him and then damon says he needs you now more than ever just like oh you, the, these are the lines that damon comes out with where you're like huh mm -hmm. something a little bit more going on with him he's not quite mm -hmm. as simple as he seems yeah I like those moments he has with Venera. Yeah, yeah. The conversations are really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, pretty much a lot of the conversations are, like, are really good. They're not yeah, like, they're like power they're, where you're waiting for nothing to happen. Well, you know, think about all the clumsy metaphors and and you know pseudo philosophical garbage that they try and throw into Rings of Power, and then compare it to like the actual like slick, smart, well thought out dialogue that you get in Ring in um, House of the Dragon. You know, one's just an absolute pleasure to listen to. The other, you're just gritting your teeth trying to get through it. Yeah, at the at when when Lainor sits down, and he said, "I sorry, I wasn't there." And she and and Renera goes, "Those should be our house words." Like a little yes. simple <laughs> line like that, it just stands out now. You know, because it's it makes you chuckle a little bit, but it puts some levity in this show that's so layered. And then, of course, we compare it to the. Cran, the script that was written by Cran, um, <laughs> simple three-year-olds uh, adaptation of Tolkien, and 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 you know the, I, I love how you said this, Mahler. Like this is it's the timing of this was perfect. It couldn't have been more perfect for our argument, our our thesis of all of our channels for all of these years or weeks or whatever, however long we've been doing it. 
is we just like a good story. So mm -hmm. here's a good story next of the same genre next to the 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 uh, a terrible one. Lord of the Rings should have done better. It's it's got a wave of momentum. People were really fondly looking back on the Peter Jackson trilogy. It's hit that 20 year rule. The book sales are going nuts. People were excited for Lord of the Rings. It should be killing it right now. And then it's up against the show that just followed up a disaster and it's a prequel of all things. And by the way, prequels should all die. I think like we really just need to end all prequels. Yeah. Um and it's a success and it's just because it's it's well written and it even has some actors and creatives act like complete idiots except for for the most part the main showrunner is staying mm -hmm. on the show and the guy who was an idiot is now gone miguel sapochnik uh the guy who shot the damn episodes too dark uh and said some stupid shit he's gone now i did it again gone. after what happened do you think that was like revenge He's like, yeah, you don't like it's dark? Here's some more dark for you. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm going to make the darkest episode you've ever seen, God damn it! Yeah, people did an, uh, a comparison also with Lord of the Rings and the, you know, and when you see the Battle of Helm's Deep, it's yeah. done at night and it's so beautifully shot. You, you, There's nothing you miss. There's no detail you miss. Yeah, they had that, like, obviously it's floodlights, but like it's meant yeah. to be moonlight or something moonlight. like that, but it just, just the right amount, it glints off the armor and everything, so you could perfectly see exactly what's going on uh, yeah there's not like this weird confusion where it's like i just see a bunch of shapes moving around and i don't really know who's winning or losing or anything i think i speak for everyone when i say we will take uh like awkward and bad lightning lighting where we don't know the light source over no lighting mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah, I don't think we're going on a limb on that one. I'd rather see something than not see it. And like, except <laughs> Rings of Power can shoot its entire fucking episode <laughs> black, and I'd be fine with that. And, and just uh, yeah, mute the dialogue as well. And it's like, yeah, there you go. We'll or just watch a some... blank TV for yeah. for an hour. <laughs> That's more entertaining, actually. Yeah. Reviews will skyrocket. <laughs> Strong five out of ten. <laughs> There's no racism there when everything's black. It's all black. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's the uh, thing, by the way, that, that, that I find fascinating about all this. If you check anybody's streams on Rings of Power, going over it, how much time is spent talking about like Disa and her race compared to all of the insane mechanics involved in the creation of Mount Doom? Just compare that subject versus that one. It's like, trust me, people care about the the, the writing. And and this is the thing, man. If um if Disa was in a show that was like really good, I think people would be like, well. Uh, it wasn't quite the casting I was looking for, but I mean, she's a you know, good actress, and the story is facilitating something there. So, you know, that that's what the conversation would be. It's just like it's not going to work anymore. The, after the pyroclastic flow wiping out all characters, but then totally not. It's just like, how can you defend this? Like, this is it's just betrays all the stakes. That's the biggest thing that's happened in the show, and it's not going to have any repercussions that it should on the significant characters, and that matters. Yeah, so it just does. They spent a but, bunch of time trying to explain how Mordor was formed. Is that right? Yeah, more or less. Yeah, because when we when we pick up the series, like Mordor is like a, a country Formant. that's being occupied. It's like Germany after World War Two, basically. Like the the elves are occupying the place and keeping an eye on the local civilians, and it's just like farmland. Hmm. Uh, and the orcs take over, um, drive the humans out. There's a big battle, and then they enact their plan to resurrect Mount Doom, which is just like a mountain here like with snow on the top and stuff and like they flood it with water that triggers the volcano and it, it erupts and just wipes out everything and it's almost like just an insta conversion from like nice fertile country to mordor land Evil. of death basically yeah and it's just so dumb and it's uh, I, I you can almost imagine the writers like patting themselves on the back like yeah we nailed it Mount Doom. people will love this <laughs> yeah it's right. so fucking smart man God, we nailed Geological that. location needs an origin. Yeah. yeah. We just you can't know, assume it's there. You know? It kind of sounds like, you know, that movie, King, is it called Kingsman? Kingsman? Yes. The, the, mm -hmm. Yeah. Where Pretty they cool. show the British countryside and how during World War One it converts into tr trench warfare. And they had that really one really cool shot where it just transitions. Like, hmm. that. that's a cool way, but just to instant to, anyway. You guys get it. I love that shot, by the way. Yeah, and I cool like shot. that movie. I like that movie a lot. It was. I, it was pretty cool. I like parts Pride. of it. Mm -hmm. But I like the Kingsman series. It's good. So good. Yeah. The first, one. The first, 
first one's great. The Golden oh, Circle was a bit, uh, uh, hmm. but you know, uh, we do have a bunch of super chats. If we've got a bit of time, do you think we can answer a few? See how we get on. Let's do it. All right, yeah. let's do it. Um, yeah, the first one, very, very timely actually. Ezra Miller's cellmate <laughs> says, uh, "Justice for <laughs> justice for Nick Rakita." Yeah, God, what the fuck? He's his channel's been um, nuked. Nope. Yep. He said uh, he's that's... talking to his channel like the helper, right? And uh, so yeah, there's still there's still a good amount of hope that it'll be reversed, from what I understand. That must have been a tense conversation to have with your your YouTube rep. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, so what, uh, why why have you killed my channel? Well, yeah, especially if like the rep it, it says like the rep is typing like please please don't say what I, and they go like sorry Nick <laughs> but it's time we're, we're getting rid of it or something like that. Yeah. This is the thing, uh, you know, we've talked about it many times. There is that sort of Damocles, man. It's it's up there, mm -hmm. all back and forth. He is. Um, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, chat. Top five streamer, top five streamer on YouTube, well, at least top ten. He's, he's got to be if there's a big trial he'd be, one. He'd be number what? one in as lore, far as super right? chats. In super chats, I'm talking about in super chat donations. He is in wow. the top ten all the time. Wow. Uh, well, he I guess was Rumble are about to appreciate an increase uh -huh. in viewership. <laughs> yep. Yeah, damn. By the way, I didn't even know what Rumble was until people were like, "That's where he is now," and I was like, "Oh shit, okay." And by the way, that's how those platforms will grow, is when a user is like, I want to find this person. It's like, got to find them here now and not on YouTube. You push yeah, enough, enough people, people away. Get to... Yeah. It's, uh, it's always that way. Um, Chuck Sennhausen sent me a two-parter. He said, thank you, Drinker, for sliding deep into my DMs on Patreon last week and suggesting doing a happy hour on Cobra Kai, one of the best shows ever. Yes. Jeremy and Tom will be there, hopefully. Awesome. Have you thought about bringing in as Gary or Chrissy Meyer to join the orgy of hash brown greatness. I don't know. Gary, have you seen Cobra Kai? I can't actually remember. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, who knows? Maybe one day. Um, one day. But yeah, I will uh, I will talk about the latest season at some point because I'd like to cover it. Um, RRTNZ sent me a two-parter as well. Said, Hail Drunkler, another critical drinker. Top five suggestion. Top five comedies with Hot Fuzz, Airplane, Tropic Thunder, and Dodgeball, and... <laughs> Bros, nah, just kidding. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the biggest flop ever. <laughs> uh, wow, who would have thought that like producing a movie for a tiny niche audience would result in a tiny niche audience going to see it? it was shocking yeah. stuff. The movie was flaccid. Who could have? Known? Oh, it didn't rise I... to the occasion. You might say. Oh. <laughs> I love that. What their idea of comedy is one of the characters saying, "Guys, remember white people?" Yeah. <laughs> God. Oh my god! Yeah, it's just the... who was this meant to appeal to? Honestly, I'm not this is... clear on that because as a lot of people point out, it's like so. Because I don't, you guys correct me if I'm wrong on this. Is it a romantic comedy with gay men? Is the idea okay? So idea. here's the thing so. about audiences going to see romantic comedies. You may not know this, but like demographics is you're already in trouble in terms of. Uh, I don't know when the last time I saw a romantic comedy in cinema was. I don't know. Have I ever done that? Have you guys ever done that? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It's well, sketchy. Yeah. It's, it's you just don't need dates. to. You just don't okay. need to. Like forgetting Sarah Marshall. Does that count? That I think that counts. Maybe. That counts. Yeah, it's a it's a romantic kind of comedy. I went with my wife. But, but like, if I go with my wife, to a movie like that, like some art house movie, it's because she went to twenty like horror and Marvel movies with me. Right. So, yeah. Horror and Marvel are kind of synonymous at this point. They are. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, she, she pretends. That's bullshit. She likes them all anyway. Uh, the other one from our TNZ says, while we're in suggestion mode, how about a stream or review recommends on the Bourne trilogy? Hugely influenced the spy genre in the two thousands and told a good story at the same time. Cheers. Uh, I could indeed, yeah. Um, it's it's a weird one, right, for me. And I don't know if you guys are the same with the Bourne movies. I never loved them. Like, I kind of appreciated them for being, oh, okay, like an interesting premise and stuff. But I was never, like, that bought into them. I never got excited when a new one came out. I don't know if that's just me. I, can't, I felt the same way. I just never got into the story. And it, it was one of those movies I would watch and then just quickly forget the mm -hmm. plot. Yeah. yeah, I was never passionate about Bourne myself. Mm -hmm. And it was too and shaky. It, the shaky cam was too much. 
Yeah. I think Honest Trailers described it best. It's like it's like someone just strapped a, a GoPro to a meth head and just turned them <laughs> loose. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's how these scenes play out. <laughs> um, Andrew McCarty said, Men, what is the definitive Sherlock Holmes uh, movie or TV show? I love Robert Downey Jr.'s movies, but he's all I've uh, seen. I also finished reading up to the final problem, first time reading the books. Mm-hmm. Um I'm not like yeah, I'm not a massive Sherlock Holmes aficionado, so I don't know if I can name you a better one. I know they had a a TV show that was out in like the eighties that was quite popular. It was like Sherlock Holmes Mysteries or something. That was meant to be quite good. I heard Elementary is uh good. It's like a um, modern adaptation. Lucy Liu is Watson. Have you heard of this? I've heard yeah, of it, yeah, I, I never an, watched it. I saw an episode, I just didn't like their take on it. It was I don't know. I I, I like the I like the British BBC Sherlock that they did, you know, 10 years ago that it started and then ended about six years ago Mm. with Benedict Cumberbatch. I love, even though the last season was a little whatever, but it was, I thought that was a really Uh, good take on it. I didn't know his name. It's, is it, is it Basil? Basil? Cucumber Patch. Basil Basil Rathbone. The old old school one, the old British one. That's the one like I watched when I was a kid because I'm, like a thousand years older than all of you but um is, is this the one i'm thinking of it's uh it's the guy with the big long face you know the the the, the one like I, I when i think of sherlock holmes i see this guy the 1939 series of oh films no no that's the 30s that, yeah. and stuff yeah because that's what they used to play on ktla channel 5 and channel 13 for us in southern california so that's what i would see during the day but also young sherlock holmes spielberg produced movie uh. love that movie Oh, I'm, I'm all, personally, that. I'm all about Enola Holmes. I want to see Millie yeah. by <laughs> just, That's uh, better. Love that. Yeah. <laughs> you go, girl. Solve those crimes. <laughs> um, Everett McIntosh says, being a hard-drinking whiskey lover of Scottish descent, I never felt represented on YouTube until I've seen you. You changed my life and you're saving lives. Drinker, keep it up. Well, that's, you know, Eternal said they were saving lives, but I'm actually doing it. One bottle of booze Proof, at a time. Right there. You know, why is everybody like Jeremy Brett? Jesus. Okay, calm down, chat. Oh, hang <laughs> Got you there, I suppose. Um, Andrew oh. McCarty. I didn't watch that one. It came out between. Dude, he was active for how long? Oh, no, that was as an actor. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, sorry. Oh, okay. I'm familiar with that one. Maybe that's why. Uh, you can, can you forgive me? We do. I was watching think- Doctor Who instead. Okay, Brits, I was supporting you. I was supporting <laughs> you, man. <laughs> you weren't there, man. You weren't there. Uh, Andrew McCarty says uh, St. Gary something on Instagram it would be better uh, than the green pickle that we get uh, okay uh, maybe Gary knows more about that than I do I'll pass it on I'll have to look at my Instagram which is run right. by Mrs. Nerdrotic. Uh he also says have you guys read or watched One Piece It's uh, if so what are your thoughts there is so much care and thought put into it like Tolkien or Lucas world building second only to Tolkien's cost two dollars a month to read online one piece Don't i have tons it. of it i was sent to it and it's it's dense it is very dense it's a long boy it's the long yeah. boy yeah a, a dense boy that could be the name of your first son long boy there you go or all your uh, sons smaller i'll keep it in mind <laughs> call them all the same or, name or all your spawn <laughs> who's called long boy the long boy <laughs> JK Fozo says, I like the way DD moved uh, and his fight seems for the most part, but that's about it. I'm not going to lie. Uh, my low expectations were somewhat exceeded. I guess he's talking about Daredevil. Mm. Uh, I didn't like it, to be honest. Uh, I thought the, the fight scenes were pretty weak compared to the Daredevil fights, which were visceral and like actually had impact to them, and they were done in continuous takes as well. Which were so oh much yeah, dude. When the when the action scene started, I was like, God, this is this. It's impossible. You're never gonna be able to do it. And then they just do the normal cut, 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 cut. And I was like, Yeah, okay. Yeah, and very obviously CGI Daredevil as well. Like, there's no stuntman. Well, man. Oh, did you enjoy man. like he was like, Oh, I gotta be doing stealth, and then proceeds to really not be stealthy at all. <laughs> uh, right? Lucky that his opponents were armed with crossbows for some reason, and then, and and then she like crashed through the ceiling. Was it? Yeah. yeah, she crashed through the ceiling yeah. to 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 
to be saved so we can call back to the hall the iconic hallway scene and go girls can save them oh my god yeah. did you notice like how bad the effing cgi was when she was talking in the first of the episode like it got worse it yes. got and i went okay thank you because i went to another episode to go was it this bad in the last episode no it wasn't it was bad yeah. Her mouth does not sync up with what she's saying. No, not at all. I think I think they're just wanting to get used to it now. They're just like, just shut up. It's all bad. Just just shut up. It, it's anytime she has to walk down a hallway or something. Oh, it's, it's like yeah. this really awkward, jerky. Eh, 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 eh. It's just like the animation is absolutely garbage. And it's like yeah. how hard is it to just mocap a normal person and scale them up? You even, even but even that. her eyes, everything, even where she's looking, everything feels off about it. Is yeah. we're deep in the uncanny valley. Yeah, uh, the I miss the on, canny like, valley. Even like her, yeah, <laughs> even just like the detail on her skin or the way the light reflects off her, it, it just looks all wrong. It's just like yeah. yeah, people have compared her to like a PS2 character, and that's kind of what she looks like. Yeah, and you look back on twenty years ago, how they had to manage with Gollum because of such a difficult character to bring to the screen with the limited you know, technology they had at that time, but they did such a great job of it, making his, his skin actually look like skin. And they taught, I think they taught an actual painter how to paint visual, um, virtually to paint on every aspect of his skin. And he did it in a way that it would be layered to look very realistic. That's it. Like, cause yeah, someone just mentioned here, like her, her skin is just flat green. Like there's no detail. Yeah, to it. it looks like Gumby. If you guys remember Gumby. Maybe not. I do. Yeah. yeah, she looks looks like not, not even Shrek anymore. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Shrek has paws, so. <laughs> but they're yeah. making Shrek references, so it's okay, right? It, it must be. Uh, next one is uh, from Silver, who says, "Invite random film talk. His rings of power vids are brilliant." Uh, okay, uh, I've not heard of him actually. Uh, Unhinged says the only cure for these trash shows like She-Hulk, Rings of Dumber, etc. is The Drinker and Az reviewing Hot Rod. I love you both. Thank you. <laughs> we must review Hot Rod, actually. I love um, Hot Rod. It's, it's great. Yeah. I, uh, I'm just thinking about it now, actually. Whiskey. <laughs> Why do you keep saying it like that? Okay, saying, I will. Saying what, what way. <laughs> Cool. So she Wait. does the special move on to make him shit himself, and it's like, yeah. yeah, oh, I'm sorry, I had to do that. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's fine. <laughs> I have to leave now. Um, Kevin O'Neill says, "Drinker, my boy, when can you move on from the spooky films? You should check out the Hudsucker Proxy, a 1994 comedy from the Coen Brothers and Sam Raimi that flopped at the box office, but has since gained a cult following." There's a good recommendation. Um, five picoseconds says female lawyer of the year didn't even bother to look into her client's broken suit to make sure she actually had a case to begin with uh huh yeah. best lawyer out there <laughs> it's the thing though because that is all they know about law to be like that they got this case how could it how could it be thrown out uh that there you go we'll make that the realization in the courtroom there you go courtroom drama and it's like that happens before and even if they were told that they'd be like yeah but we we got nothing else. Like that's 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 it. That's what we got. So Charlie Cox must have been laughing his ass off in those scenes. <laughs> Just sitting there, like, oh my god, this is so fucking dumb. What am I, I tell I doing? you what, Drinker, he's probably like, this gets me Daredevil the show. So yeah, he's so he's been is, wanting this like for so long. Yeah, so, yeah. You got your Daredevil show. That's the good news. Bad news, got to make some cameos, and uh, one of them is going to be. By in. But then, how, what's your what's your actual? anticipation of the daredevil show oh it's gonna be shit well there you go i mean Absolutely like shit. what's the point in doing it if it's gonna be garbage for one well, that's the calling thing. it born again when they did born again already like in the netflix they yeah, did it born again, again now okay. gary because he's on a different platform well, <laughs> born again again yeah born again? okay <laughs> again, again. <laughs> clever and you're being bigoted yes you Re have no idea how hard it is for a woman to be a professional lawyer Yes, yeah. I, I don't. I don't. Can we oh, just that speech where he's like, you, you have to work twice as hard as the men while like ice skating backwards in high heels or something and looking beautiful at the same time. It was like <laughs> patronizing nonsense. Yeah, it's... we're twice as hard for half the recognition. It's like, oh my God, Mallory. It's, uh... it's so funny because of how much we talk about oh you know there's constant complaining like women don't have any privileges and and like most of my content if i 
published it as a man, I would definitely be canceled. <laughs> there are privileges to being a woman. Pay attention to that. Don't forget. Yeah, there are, especially a white girl, like a blonde white girl. That's the most privileged thing uh, in this country. Anything. <laughs> I don't know. Backwards. You get away a lot with being brown too. I'll, I'll just tell you that. <laughs> you said that, not us. So it's yeah. all right. Cancel uh, her. Yeah. Movie Mangler says Daredevil wasn't as bad as it could have been. Uh, they let him have the upper hand sometimes and teach her a bit about heroism. Felt like maybe Charlie Cox had some input. He seems pretty based. It does. Uh, I agree with that assessment. They do give actors input on their roles, by the way. So he would know. Uh, more than anybody on that set so yeah like that where he's sitting down and he's talking to her about being a hero i think that's a good that's a good little speech he gives her right yeah. there yeah. yeah um i just wish we had more of that actually in this show mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, potion says they treated all the male characters as a nuisance so i'm sure they'll do the same to daredevil they had the hulk uh in which they could have had him teach she hulk how to be a hero and made him more interactive um yeah. yeah, I mean, they could have done that. They, they've kind of given that role to Daredevil to some extent, but I don't know if this was just a one and done for him. Like, he's just gone now. I guess so. Um, here's one for all of us from Stephen Bobo. It says, critical drinker and panel. Uh, who do you think is the worst of bad robot showrunners? Alex Kurtzman or the guys who's making the Rings of Power? Wow. Well, that's one for Gary to figure out, I guess. That is a hard yeah. question. Um, I gotta say, the current showrunners of Rings of Power because they were given so much money. Kurtzman destroyed a franchise, but it had a lot to. Mm, that's a tough decision. <laughs> he's he's been able to keep it going, like for some reason. I I don't know how. So his ability to bullshit people behind the scenes must be just next level. Plus, it's just like next level, like. <laughs> The next season will be the one that catches on. And one of the arguments I've heard is, well, you know, Star Trek didn't really catch on till syndication. We don't have syndication anymore. So there, he's trying to say, and, and the the showrunners, uh, the showrunners for Lord of the Rings said the same thing. We're hoping people will watch episodes down the road. We're, we're, you know, it's a slow burn with our show. So, yeah, I don't know. I honestly, a Star Trek fan, uh, which I am one, I'm a bigger Lord of the Rings fan. But, like, it's pretty close. But I'd have to say these two idiots finally get, get a job. Oh, and in the article, they said, let's give TV a try. And they were given <laughs> the biggest show in the history of television. And their line <laughs> was, let's give TV a try. But, Kurt, uh, you did you did a video on The Mummy, right? Uh, Critical Drinker was your video I saw on The Mummy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's a great, great video. So he was his career was over after that, and and he was able to usurp his buddy, um, and get Star Trek and fuck over Brian Fuller and a couple of other people to save his career. He just wanted a franchise, so it was very similar. I just need something to work on. I don't give a fuck about Star Trek, and that's what the showrunners feel about Lord of the Rings. But long answer, long winded answer to what's worth. I don't fucking know. I think these guys, the current thing, <laughs> the latest thing that's shitty, but I think this thing is apocalyptic and it's disaster and star trek was part of the learning process to get here so i would say these jd Payne and patrick mckay i mean patrick sorry patrick uh, star trek was kind of a franchise that was in decline anyway when they took over like it was it was in trouble jar jar did his uh his work on destroying it too yeah yeah, yeah. so like the, the 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 tng movies had been in decline and, and you know enterprise had failed and then yeah, J.J. Abrams took over, and then his movies petered out pretty quickly, and then Kurtzman took over that. So it's just like this constant failing downwards, I suppose, for that. But like with Lord of the Rings, man, like that was a pretty untarnished brand for the most part. Like the Hobbit movies, yeah, they were pretty shit. But you know, there was still a lot of fan goodwill towards it, and it was still relatively intact. And man, they have uh, they've done a number on it. They really have. Uh, and, to, and take something uber traditional and just fill it with progressive and m modern themes of intersectional feminism and all that. That's that's where you just I mean, this is it's anti that this story is antithet antithetical to all of those things. It is the yeah. most traditional story of her, uh, 
being heroic and friendship and and loyalty and mm -hmm. you know like good versus evil this is all shit hollywood does not believe in anymore yeah yeah absolutely um what a time to be alive oh that's uh, awesome johnny's says hail you sexy panel they cucked my boy daredevil fuck the mcu and disney i mean i think he summed it up pretty well there yeah yep. can't add anything to that even uh, liam john smith says please react to mario's movie trailer is that out now? That's a thing? That, yeah, it just the trailer dropped today. Uh, oh, shit. I actually want to see that, yeah. Is <laughs> I want to Chris see what Pratt in it? Yeah. He's the voice. Oh. Uh, we will watch that afterwards. Uh, Frank with a C says, Happy birthday, Mublishi. Oh, yeah. Thanks. That's Wait, it's not your birthday, is it? <laughs> yeah. Is it? Yeah. Uh... Oh, shit. Sorry, man. What? Happy birthday. Happy What's birthday. I was just fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I think your birthday was like at the start of the year or something, weirdly. October 6th. Funnest time of the year. Spooky month. It's not a coincidence. Oh, man. Oh, and you have to waste birthday. your time doing this. Sorry, man. I know. That's the, hey, that was it's Thursdays. I agreed to this long ago. <laughs> yeah. so I'm going to try to stream uh, a video game after this stream. Yeah, by the way, is it all right if we add that three hours? Uh, yeah, yeah, three, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I will cool. end, like, you know, a wee bit before that, actually, just out of respect for you. Oh, you don't have to do that. I'll let, I'll let you cut your shift short. Um, Lewis Horseman says, Hey, Drinker, can you review AI and Gattaca at some point? Great films and very much underappreciated. I could indeed, yeah. Um, Grimnak28 says, Hail, did you know in the third age of Middle-earth, two brave hobbits go on an adventure from the Shire, Scotty and Pippin. Cheers, gents, high rags. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, Bearded says that intro has better writing and CGI than the Rings of Power and She-Hulk combined. It's pretty good. Yep. Uh, Red Muskrat says, have you ever watched Six Feet Under? Francis Conroy is my spirit animal. Also, please review High Tension for Halloween. It's a French slasher slash horror film from the early 2000s. I haven't seen High Tension, actually. Uh, Me Low says, have a long man iced tea on me, lads. I think we're going to need it. Well, we kind of do, yeah, with modern shows. Yeah. Uh, Archangel says, Happy birthday to the long man. Thank you very much. Uh, Edit Man RGG2 says, The Mario Brothers animated trailer by Illumination is coming out today as the open bar is opened. It probably is out by QA time. Any thoughts on Chris Pratt voicing the Italian plumber? Is it cultural appropriation or does no one give a shit? This is stupid. <laughs> Just pick Charles Martinet. He's been voicing Mario for 10 billion years. It's so unfair. <laughs> yeah. I, that's what I would agree with, but otherwise, other than that, no, I don't. Who gives a crap who voices who? Um, David Kelly says when Galadriel sees Autobot City on fire and says Megatron must be stopped no matter the cost, then transforms into a truck with the touch by Stan Bush playing was pure Tolkien at its finest. Listen, yeah, ev every fucking comment on my my Rings of Power video is stuff like this. Uh -huh. <laughs> It's like what when Galadriel says it's Morbin time and charges at Sauron and throws a lightsaber through his face, then <laughs> I Were was they doing shaking. That for, um, the aerial, uh, the little movie trailer, I think that, that was on that as well. Yeah, <laughs> it's just <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, I think it's still going. They put up, uh, they put, they put up a couple of shorts, and it's still pretty much going on. That is amazing. I love it. That's the best troll of all time. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. Like the, some of them are pretty imaginative. Yeah. Uh, Red Strider says, "Hey, Drinker and Co. I got a thousand views on my Rings of Power episode five review, and it was only my fifth video ever. Awesome. Any advice? Uh, any advice for my U channel to keep up the momentum? Love what you're all are doing. Fourth Air Lingus. Yes. Um, yeah. Um, well done, man. And uh, yeah, hopefully your channel continues to grow. I guess you just keep." Um, plugging away with what you're doing like there's obviously a huge amount of interest in rings of power if people are going to start to see you as like a, a good guy to go to for opinions about the show and breakdowns of the episodes that's your in right there you know people will keep coming back so yeah keep doing what you're doing man and best of luck to you next one okay. is kevin o'neill who says question for baggage claim as a woman do you ever feel patronized by woke hollywood's portrayal of what they think a strong woman is love your content by the way and cheers yes absolutely i feel patronized by it all the time i think the whole idea that like i was saying earlier that to become 
a good woman, you have to be a man is very patronizing. I think I think Hollywood is not understanding what feminine strength actually looks like. And I've been having, I think I've been asking myself that question a lot is that what does it mean to be female and strong without necessarily having muscles and a sword in hand? I've been asking that myself that question a lot. And I don't think that Hollywood really knows how to answer that question and instead just wants me to pander to it wants me to buy into their worldview by just constantly pandering to me and telling me I'm amazing. If I'm a woman, I'm amazing. And I don't like that. Yeah, I don't think anyone likes this kind of portrayal at mm -hmm. the moment because it's like it's a double edged sword where not only do they, they elevate women in this weird way where like they just try and turn them into men, but they also denigrate men at the same time. And so you know, I don't think anyone's particularly coming out of that feeling good about it. Like you say, if you're feeling patronized by how they portray women on screen, we're feeling equally pissed off about like men are just portrayed as idiots. So like, what what, what does anyone get out of that? <laughs> Not yeah. much. Yeah, women, we're the new men. Yeah. <laughs> but then you're going to be the ones that will end up having to be broken down if the, if we follow this rationale. It'll just be yeah. this endless cycle. You know, it's weird. I can't wait to hear in She-Hulk. Men, they've had a nice run, haven't they? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> remember men? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so much Charles Hurst here says, I'm proud to report that I haven't watched a single episode of She-Hulk. I've been sentenced to death by Snoo Sue. Uh, I think that's probably <laughs> a good a good alternative to She-Hulk, actually. Um, Henry back to play says, Hail Fellowship, ladies and gents. Uh, unlike Game of Thrones, I think House of the Dragon will succeed and hit the landing because, well, the story has an actual ending. That's a good point, actually. I think, um, yeah, I mean, yeah. It'll, it'll definitely play into its success, I imagine, having an ending. Yeah, if you like it. If you like it. As long as it's we'll consistent with the characters, uh, even if it's like not a traditional happy ending or a good resolution to everything, I'll be all right with it. I would say it is. Yeah, I, I would say that. that. Um, Nathaniel Updike says, "Hello, drinker and friends. Do you think there are any artistic merits to disgusting movies uh, like Pink Flamingos?" I couldn't tell you because I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Like, yeah, oh, that's a that. that's a Waters film, isn't it? Uh, it is. Um, I mean, you know, a lot of people draw a lot of things out of a lot of movies. Uh, I can't remember if I ever actually saw Pink Flamingos. I'm familiar with it though. I saw Pink Flamingos a long time ago. So it's about a drag queen. Yeah, it's not my thing. Uh, I, like John Waters films, uh, a lot of the girls I was dating in high school liked them, so I watched a lot of them. Hmm. Really loved it, though. I was it's really divine, loved. right? That's yeah, the, divine. yeah. Uh, Very famous for eating some poo, eating some eating poo. poo, eating poo. Oh. Well, if you if you want to be famous, that's something. Uh... <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, back at a time like. It all stemmed from Bowie era androgyny from the early 70s. That was true rebelling and trying to push envelopes. It wasn't trying to uh, to blur genders. It was trying to rebel against the system. It was very different. Very different. Um, yeah, it doesn't sound like a, an absolute thrill ride or anything. Um, no. Cat says, I'm a woman and She-Hulk makes me feel violated by destroying my favorite show, Daredevil. Disney can burn Happy Birthday Mauler. Aw, thank you. <laughs> I, I love that double-barreled, like, you know, Disney can burn. Oh, and Happy Birthday Mauler. <laughs> happy Birthday. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next one is also James Moore, who says, Happy Birthday Mauler. There you go. Thank you. Um, Ant Rodriguez says, hey guys, first time super chatter, been a fan for years. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much, my friend. Um, Eugenio Olivencia says Nintendo just showed off the first footage of the Super Mario Brothers movie. Looks decent for what they showed. No Italian accent though from Pratt. What the fuck? What? Really? They, they, is that a surprise? He would have been cancelled to hell and back, right? If he had That's tried to true. go, hello, I'm a Mario. <laughs> That's <laughs> then, so true. But then if you're not going to do the Italian accent, then what's the what's point the in point? being Mario? I, yeah. dude, I completely agree with you, but it's as, as cynical as you can imagine. It's Chris Pratt. 
Chris yeah. Pratt There's goes no on the Italian that's going to give a crap about somebody appropriating no, our. Of course actor. they would. None of us. It's it's all so backward. Nobody wants Chris Pratt's voice on Mario. That's not like what the fuck? What are you doing? <laughs> it's, not, it's like a meme. It's the thing where they said Seth Rogen is Donkey Kong. It's like, are you kidding? What is this? Like, why are you doing this? Wait, Jack random... Black is Bowser. It's like, <laughs> what? Maybe that works. I don't know. But no, I, this is random, but with Chris Pratt, like anything he says, they just jump on him. I think mean, he, he, congrat- mm. he just congratulated his wife publicly for giving birth to a hel- healthy child, and they just jumped on him and called him ableist for wanting a healthy there, child. Yeah, there, there's a lot of deep-seated shit going on in their attitude towards Chris Pratt, man. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a weird one. It's like, like you, can't, you can't be happy that your child was born healthy. Yeah, it's just like... Because he, he's kind of like, he's not super religious, but it's just like, you know, he's a Christian and, and probably he's like, he's a bit like non-political as far as I can tell. And that's yeah. like, you know, the, the touch of death really, you know, in their minds okay. is like, well, you must be on the Evil. other side. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, we yeah. have to, we have to destroy you now. In the so, meantime, even within Hollywood, he's like this universally loved guy. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's... It, it's almost like the Twitter perception doesn't make any sense because it's not real. Yeah. Uh, it's hope- going to be really interesting if uh, if Elon actually does take over and mm-hmm. he skews Twitter, like or he like brings it back towards the center and a bit of balance there, and it doesn't have the enormous power to like cancel people that it used to have. Um, how is that going to influence like the perception of actors and public figures going forward? Hopefully, it's going to be a bit more fair. Because, right. yeah, the way it's been, it's just insane. Uh, yeah, it stems from Elliot, Elliot Page making false accusations about the church he was not involved with. That's where this all stems, all that hate for Chris Pratt stems from her big mouth. His big mouth, sorry. My bad. Oh, no, her, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. Elliot, her. Who knows? Uh, I thought she was a really idiot. good. Uh, uh, oh, I'm blanking on the name now she was right. good in x-men 3 kitty pride yeah kitty pride yeah so i liked her in inception too yep she was yeah, she was hey. good in inception him now it's very mm-hmm. confusing we'll just stay away from it it's best just yeah. to stay away from it so before we get canceled yeah, yeah. uh yeah. mike d says i'm giving five just for the balrog danzig t-shirt nice it does look nice someone you in the that? comments Someone in the comments also asked what what Balrog's pronouns were. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You have to. That's a good question. I can't think of anything clever right now, but I, I will come up with something. I think it's who where. Who where? Yeah, yeah. Um, Does this dress make my ass look big? Says halfway through Dark Harvest and enjoying it very much. Min- one minor quibble though. Where is the blindfold and last cigarette to complete the look on your dust jacket photos? Uh, glad to see Baggage Claim make an appearance. Thank you. And uh, yeah, I was uh, I happened to be stood next to a brick wall. <laughs> so that's probably not a great look for me in my picture. <laughs> I was trying to look, I was trying to look thoughtful and it's like that's a difficult thing to do when you're drunk most of the time. So yeah, what can I say? Um, it's a very day. California thing to do. If you work for a California company, your headshot is always in front of a brick brick wall. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's like if you're because I write thrillers and stuff, so I feel like I couldn't be in like a you know some beautiful like brightly colored surroundings. No. It had to be something moody or like some disused yeah. factory somewhere. Yeah, like, yeah. You know. <laughs> Yeah, like that's the kind of place I just mooch around, like <laughs> looking serious about things. Just moody. Yeah. Uh, brightest day says, shut up and take my money, drinker. Well, I don't mind if I do. Thanks. Uh, Ministry of Wrong Things says, is it just me or is Jen so un self aware that she literally celebrated the fact that a dude who's literally blind wanted to hook up with her? <laughs> that's, g- <laughs> that's a good point, actually. <laughs> Um. Oh. <laughs> you got to take the wins when you can get them, I suppose. Yeah, you do. Big Raj, give me a thumbs up. So thank you. Um, Janin Klassen says thoughts on them not acknowledging Matt's ears being blown up by that thunderclap. Call back to the Homelander scene where the Daredevil esque character is ruined by a single clap. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, that. big difference is the clap is on his head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that would that would work on him though. I would imagine it screw him up for a while. Mm-hmm. You know? She Hulk, you know. Yeah. Something that she even forgets. And hey, that last episode proved uh, Bruce correct. She has not got control over her anger. No, she or doesn't. Hurt people. Imagine if we'd had this more throughout the show. Like, it would have been a bit more interesting. Yep. She's actually wrestling with something. How was it in the comics? Was she struggling with her emotions during those? No, in the early books, but not not in the later books. She was abs- she was she liked being She Hulk. She liked being She Hulk very much. Now later later on in the Disney Marvel era, she revisited the uh, and I stopped reading. I couldn't handle it because they had her looking like a dude. They straight up had her just looking like a big muscly dude. It was so bad. Oh my god! As got banned on Twitter for a She Hulk, uh, saying all men must die. And it was Winter She Hulk, so it was like this red She Hulk that just looks like this giant dude with a wig on. Uh, and yeah, it's so the they Game of Thrones quote though. It's not supposed to I be. No, <laughs> yeah. you should have put it in quotes, right? Would that save you if you put it in quotes? Because it was the winter, it was like from Winter Soldier or something, and it was like the Winter Hulk, and they said winter is coming. So that's why, as said, all men, sh- all men must die. I think if um, you put it in quote marks and then cited the character that said it, maybe that would get you off maybe. with it. I got, I, yeah, because I only got suspended for seven days for repeating it. Oh, It'd be God. funny if you made up like a Game of Thrones name for a quote you just wanted to actually say, just like, you know, I fucking hate this hell site go lubo yeah. bahabas <laughs> <laughs> no one would really check so you'd yeah be good. Like, trust me it's a well yeah. book yeah trust me bro uh here's a question for us all uh slack attack says with she hulk's fourth wall breaks instead of taking the piss out of herself like a normal person she takes the piss out of everyone else then purposely points out the show's inadequacies through cameos why that, yeah. that's that's a pretty good question actually um Hmm. You know, I don't know. Do you think that some of this was done after the fact? Like they're almost like doing it on the fly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes. I hate why. Um, you well, you know, drinker. Uh, we both know. Yeah. That this this was uh, this was supposed to come out earlier, and it came out later. Um, because they need to fix this shit, and they didn't. <laughs> and this is the best we're getting. I would love okay. to have seen that first cut. Oh if boy, this is the improved version. Well, uh, didn't they say that the origin was supposed to be flashbacks and they put it into a single episode? So they had to reshoot a bunch of stuff around that. Well, that first episode was originally going to be on episode four or something. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, so you're going to jump straight into episode two where she's just already in the law firm doing stuff and then eventually you get an explanation for why she's there. Uh, Wow, that's a bold move. I'll say that. Uh, But yeah, I mean... The rest of it, it still doesn't explain why it's not funny. Like, nothing could have changed that. Uh, people have to be funny to write comedy, maybe? That would be my guess. That is true. Um, Andrew Montpetit says, Hail Open Bar, glad to finally make a live one. Um, almost as excited as I am for season two of She-Hulk, which is totally happening. Believe oh, yeah. that. Yeah. I, I'm they'll do it, though. That's the thing. Like, they've got unlimited resources. They will do it out of sheer spite. Hmm. It's not impossible. I just I didn't. when are they going to stop making financial decisions? <laughs> Someday. Yeah. We didn't. Get, we didn't get a. There's no Captain. Uh, there's no Falcon. Uh, Black Captain Falcon and Winter Soldier season two. There's no Wandavision season two. Uh, they we're getting a Loki season two. There's no Hawkeye season two. Uh, are we getting a Moon Knight season two? I think we are. Yes, we are. but you said we're not getting one for. The new Captain America, aren't we? It's gonna, it's gonna be called. It's gonna be a movie. They're doing a movie. It's gonna be a movie. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be a massive hit, and it won't be filled with a bunch of other Marvel characters. (laughs) All of them. It'll be Avengers three point five or four point five or whatever the hell we're at now. The the thing is, when we talk about like more financial decisions with these TV shows, like it doesn't operate by the normal metric of Nielsen ratings and stuff because it's a part of a streaming service. So mm-hmm. I don't even know how you'd really gauge the success of a show like this because you can't really tell, well, did someone sign up to Disney Plus to watch She-Hulk or did they they're, do it they're to gauging watch... It. They're gauging it by analytics. 
but purely by analytics. And I think that's absolutely insane. Like, I don't gauge my videos purely by minutes watched. I mean, I know that's the most important thing to, to YouTube. I don't give a shit about it, to be honest with you. I mean, like, if if people are watching our shorter, admittedly shorter videos, they're watching them. I mean, like, if it was excessively low, YouTube wouldn't recommend them. So I'm worried about the entire video. That's the only thing I can worry about. So that's what you should be worried about the entire show. And it's clear, uh, Drinker, that they're not like, cause we get so many, like you get a half, you get a 23 minute show, a series filled with 23 minute shows. There's nothing effing happens until the penultimate episode. Yeah. It's cameo. Yeah. <laughs> and it happens minutes, over and over and over and over and over again with like, this is like the ninth series in a row. They, they treat it like that. So it's purely analytics. It's insane. Totally insane. Um, okay. Jill Warden says drinker when in the USA, uh, do yourself a favor and check out Dave and Buster's a restaurant with great food, drinks and a large arcade. D don't take it from me. Dankula called it his favorite thing about the U S <laughs> Nice. What is What's that like thing? a chain or is it just one restaurant? It's What's your favorite thing? What is it? Dave, Dave and Buster's. Busters. Oh, Dave and Buster's is awesome. Yeah, I love Dave and Buster's. Yeah. What are they like everywhere? Or is it... Mostly. Yeah, I, I don't know. I haven't checked if they're in Texas yet, but yeah, it's uh, like, it's like a, right, an adult I Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. Well, I am going to be in New York next week. So if there's one there, I will check it out. Yeah, it's super American. It's like, you know, pretty decent food, video games, ski ball. You get tickets. The kids can go play video games, and there's a bar. So the yeah. adults can get drunk, and the kids can play video games. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect, yeah. In America in a nutshell. <laughs> uh, the Rotten 100 says Hollywood is telling on themselves with how they portray men. Considering the men that they're around are all liberal, they're showing how those men behave. Well, that's an interesting point, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Not the best. Yeah. Yep. Uh, UNO uh, says, Drinker, love the content. Can you try and get Ryan Hollinger on a stream? Mauler, who's worse, Galadriel or Plank? Free, Rick, free Nick Rakita. Um, damn. Mm. It's probably Galadriel. Uh, I've been really surprised with how... Because one of the things about Plank is that there's so little to garner as a person. But Galadriel, I mean, there's stuff there. She's a horrible person. You know I what think I mean? Some of it is like because you know what Galadriel's meant to be, mm. and then That's you're seeing this version it, of her. Yeah. yeah. Whereas with Captain Marvel, like all you got was the version that we saw. Yeah. Can you get, can point. you guys imagine? I'm going to be talking about Miss Marvel, but like this fun, bubbly, but has some like alcoholism in her past stuff, like superhero that's like complex and really likable. That's what Captain Marvel used to be. With Carol Danvers and Miss Marvel, really? I mind boggles. Like, what, what could that, right that film have been if she was like that? Yep. I know, yeah. and it's really actually the thing with Brie Larson is that when you look at her early interviews, she actually seems like a really nice, down to earth person. I think that Oscar really went to her head. She really changed. Did you think? Uh, yeah, was it that, or was was it like um, the whole like Me Too movement and stuff? Like, she seemed to get quite behind all of that and it's like mm -hmm. she's kind of lost all of her sense of humor and personality it's weird i thought maybe she once she got that oscar she's like oh i'm i have a responsibility and then she like yeah. really adopted that me too movement. Do it, do it, i'm right. literally saving lives yeah <laughs> yeah um, she seems to have dropped it a little bit now with her um, youtube channel but the, the there was that interview that she did like pretty recently where it's like oh when are you when are you going to retire from playing Miss Marvel or how long are you going to keep doing it and she just gave this really cringy like awkward answer like I don't know I don't know, I don't know. Like, Maybe does I anyone want mind. me to do it and it's like you could she, she, I don't know if she was trying to joke about it or what but it's like you have to diffuse that by laughing or, or something or making it obvious that you are joking but it just came across yeah. as like really like oh I'm pissed Yeah. like I know people don't like me and I'm mad about that Charisma on Command did a really good analysis of how she tells jokes without actually giving the proper cue. But, yes, you know, I've seen that. No, she, yeah, yeah, she's good, right? very bad at it. She has, yeah. and that's probably what the, the problem is she has with the, with the Carol Danver character. Her, mm -hmm. her sense of timing sucks for an actor. Yeah. Pretty bad. Yeah, it kind of all, all relies on your ability to like really convey a certain emotion at a it's certain time almost like she's not that great 
and probably shouldn't have won an Oscar. But oh, I well. mean, she was like, well, she was good apparently in Room, wasn't she? Yeah, uh, that was meant to be a pretty, pretty decent yeah. movie. Yeah, and if you and see an she was early... phenomenal in that film, sorry, that's the true reality. But go watch the movie if you don't believe me. I haven't, yeah. I haven't seen it. I'll never take watched your word that movie. I'll take your word for it. Uh, but... She was fine in Scott Pilgrim. She was fine. And she didn't. She did a couple of interviews early on, and she would make jokes. And it, she was very. It, it was very obvious when she was making jokes, even when they were very sarcastic. So something just mentally shifted with her. Yeah, it's an odd one. Mm-hmm. Strange. Uh, next one is, um, yeah, Canon Faldrow, who says Hollywood may not be saving any lives, but you lot are saving me a lot of time and annoyance by watching it, so that I don't have to. Thank you for your service. Thank you. I wish I could say it's a pleasure, but you know, it's like we do it. (laughs) It's better that we all keep our Disney accounts, but everybody else can get rid of them if they would like to. Yeah, totally. Uh, Yeah, some of us just relatives. (laughs) I was gonna say, yeah, mine is totally legit. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) pay pay for it every month. Actually, same here. It's through a relative. Yeah, Uh, I'll I'll do. I'll do a couple more, and then I'll finish up. Uh, Jake Moss gave me fifteen Australian dollars, so thank you, man. Um, Uncle Big says, Drinko, what do you think uh, of this for Black Panther? There is a multiverse. Bring back Killmonger, who's in an alter universe, uh, is worthy of the mantle of Black Panther, and is a hero, comes to this universe to assume the role of Black Panther. Um, well, I mean, you, you could, could do, I suppose. Yeah. Whatever, right? Yeah. You could do whatever you want now, because the multiverse is blown right uh, open. Multiverse? Because, I don't know, like, I don't, I don't see this being a big hit with Shuri as the new Black Panther, like, she is one of the least likable characters in in Marvel, and that's saying something. Oh yeah. man, you criticize this movie, they're gonna tear. This is gonna be I know. World is... War Three of the bots on Twitter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When this comes out. I I simply just asked the question. I wasn't even talking about any character. I said, "Where's Namor?" That's the only question I've ever asked because I don't see him. I'm glad they put the little wings on his feet on his uh, ankles. That's great, but the rest of him doesn't look anything like Prince Namor. It's, it's he's not Atlantean. It's not the. It's like I like this character. I've wanted to see him for years because uh, I'm a huge Fantastic Four fan, and he's from you know predates Fantastic. He's one of the OG Marvel characters. He's one of the first antiheroes. Uh, he's a first mutant, uh, and Aquaman is totally ripped off from him. But they beat him to it. They basically DC beat him to it. So they had they felt like they needed to make these changes, and there's rights issues. So, and that's what it stinks of. They had to like fundamentally change him for rights issues because Marvel does not have the entirety of the rights to Prince Namor. I we will see if they call him the Submariner. We'll we'll even see if they call him that. They might, they might not. I don't know, but I know the last time I heard that the rights issues were tied up with multiple producers. I mean, I know that like <laughs> when the trailer dropped, like to go back to the point you were making, um, you know, one of my mates messaged me and he was like oh, i doesn't look good this one um you know she's not going to be able to equal chadwick's you know charisma mm. and stuff he yeah. doesn't have the same kind of presence and i just replied saying yeah but like it's a black panther movie it's going to get 110 percent across the board because <laughs> no one's gonna no professional critics gonna go in on it it's yeah. gonna be the first it movie to hit 110 percent on rotten tomatoes yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Unless she like, tweets something crazy like she's already done before. It'd be, well, it'd be like when you're filling out an audience survey and it's like, did you like this movie? The, the two options will just be yes and yes. Yeah. You know, it's like you'll not even get the choice. It's, it's like how, perfect. It's like how people got with crazy rich Asians. Everybody was like, we love this movie. It's It really is the best movie ever. Yeah, yeah. that was nuts. Yeah. Uh, no, you're going to see all the cowardly critics. They're going to be so scared to. Cri- they're going to come back and saying this is better than the first one. This should be nominated for best picture. This will be. The- this is a movement, and like undoubtedly, Disney's marketing for the first one was genius, absolute genius level. It was during Black History Month that they whole led up there. They they played all into it, and they got the government involved, and there was some subsidies going on, and they were taking kids to school and bus they tried to do the same thing with captain marvel too by the way and it did work to a certain extent they were taking girls uh it was i really remember the old female showings of the movie or whatever yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. When, when, when watching a weird. movie for a billion dollar corporation becomes a political movement it's like how it, dumb do you have to be to buy into this apparently silly. 
Yeah, apparently a lot of people are that dumb. <laughs> and this is what you get. You are fighting racism by watching our Black Panther movie. You know, yeah. and it's like, it, it was a great introduction in Civil War. Absolutely brilliant introduction of a character yeah. that I liked and read in the comic yeah. books. And then they he was he was the worst character in his own movie. Well, he took a real step backwards in terms yeah. of like where he was. It's like he was right back to where he'd been before Civil War, almost like, oh, I'm yeah. not ready for the mantle of king. I don't want to do it. I don't want it. I don't want, I don't want it. Yeah. <laughs> but he's, yeah. He's a good Black Panther, and yeah. it sucks. They still should have yeah. recast him. Yeah. Right, right, but it, yeah, putting was it Michael B. Jordan, right? Was the one who played Kill Killmonger? Killmonger, yeah. Great, love that. Love the matchup between the two of them. Mm -hmm. He was good. Yeah, yeah. Good I mean, foil. he's like twice the size of Chadwick at that point, but yeah, yeah he was. But a, he should was it a... have been nominated for an Oscar? I don't know about that. It's not uh, that good. If, yeah, yeah, it's not that Dark good. Knight doesn't win Best Picture, which it should have. Yes, yeah, have yes. Out. Yes. But then you got things like Nomadland that won Best Picture, and it's like that's just a person in a van. <laughs> like it's not in Seriously. terms of cinematography and the story oh, it tells. You. It's not that. It's not that good. But yeah, agreed. But hey, yeah, Chloe Zhao did a great job with the Eternals. Um, anyway, <laughs> 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 anyway, I I know that Mauler, it's your birthday, and I don't want to keep you birthday. until midnight. So we should finish up, and we should let you let you finish your shift early. Because you've Aww. done you've done more than enough, sir. And the same for Nerdrotic and Baggage Claim. You guys have been awesome tonight. Um, for anyone watching this who somehow isn't subscribed to these guys, the link is to their channels are in the description. Please give them a subscribe because they are fantastic creators, uh, and obviously Mauler is as well. Um, and yeah, do you guys have anything that you want to make us aware of before we finish up? Any anything coming up? Ladies first. Like Thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. I, love have, I loved having this chat with all of you. Nice. Oh, awesome. Brilliant. Nice uh, and easy. I'm making a video on that article. Well, actually, I, I'm done. Quarter Black is working on it right now. Ooh. And it'll be out tomorrow morning. We got Friday Night Tights with Shad and Disparu. And then Sunday, I'm with uh, this guy up here. And, Hello. Uh, and uh, Dricker, you're welcome. If you want to come on one of the streams towards uh, towards the end uh, for House of the Dragon, looking forward to that. Oh, um, oh, and I, oh, yeah, I'll be live tonight. I tried to forget about it. I'll be live tonight at uh, midnight, right after the penultimate episode of the Rings of Power for all you night owls out there. Thanks, all man. Right. Have me on. It's always an honor and a privilege. Thank you, man, for coming on. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah. Thank you to everyone who's donated Super Chats tonight. You guys are awesome and super generous as always. And thank you to my awesome team of mods who've, uh, who've kept everything running here because I could not do this stuff without you. Uh, but anyway, that is all we've got for today. So go away now. <laughs> Bye.